Well, it's a Saturday night in Biloxi, Mississippi, and the Carolina Thunderbirds are going for the sweep this weekend of the Mississippi Seawolves. Last night, Carolina, a dominant 5-3 victory on the back of four points from both Jan Salak and Roman Kramer. And now tonight, they're trying to get more of the same as the Thunderbirds are trying to take the weekend series and the season series here against the Mississippi Seawolves this evening. Welcome inside the Mississippi Coast Coliseum for the first time this evening. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Great to have you along here on your Saturday evening from wherever you may be. And last night, Carolina picking up a decisive victory over the Mississippi Seawolves. They got the scoring started just four and a half minutes into the game. It was Yuri Pestuka on a tip in in front in his first game since all the way back on March 16th. He made it a one to nothing game. Mississippi responded quickly though. They tied it up just 57 seconds later on a deflection from a shot from the point by Philip Wong. That had the game tied at one and then late in the first period Mississippi was called for a too many men call and Carolina made them pay as it was Jan Salak on a one timer in the slot that gave Carolina the advantage once again and would give them the advantage for the rest of the evening. Carolina then would rattle off three more in the second Nate Keeley he ended up getting his ninth of the season coming at the three minute mark and seven minutes later, Jacob Schnapp got in on a breakaway. He didn't get it on the first try, but got a rebound and was able to sneak one past Joseph Shepard to make it a four to one game at the time. 49 seconds later, Pestuka got his second of the night with a ripper from the top of the slot and Carolina was rolling, leading five to one going into the third period. But the beginning of the third, things got a little dicey for the Thunderbirds and it was Justin Portillo getting two in, le in just over a minute, a minute and 11 seconds to be exact, to make it a two-goal game at the time with about 14 and a half minutes remaining there in the third period. But Carolina was able to get back, there, get their legs back under them and able to respond. Roman Kramer, he found the back of the net for his 15th of the season. Him and Salak, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, both combined for four points on the evening as Kramer and Salak both had a goal and three assists. There's a beautiful feed from Jan Salak and Kramer was right there on the doorstep for the tip. And that made it six to three and Carolina was able to roll to a 6-3 to three victory over the Mississippi Seawolves last night. And now they're trying to find more of the same here this evening. Carolina comes into this evening with a record of 38-11-3 with 110 points on the campaign. On the other side, Mississippi a 21-27-3 record overall with 61 points. With the win from Columbus last night and the Mississippi loss, the matchups are locked for the Continental Division for the Commissioner Cup playoffs. It will be Columbus and Mississippi in the first first round and it'll be Carolina and Port Huron in the first round. One of those will see each other with the right to represent the Continental Division in the Commissioner Cup Final. Don't forget that Carolina still three more regular season games coming up after this evening against the Columbus River Dragons. 735 on Thursday and Friday at the Fairgrounds Arena and then 705 in Columbus next Saturday for the regular season finale for the Thunderbirds and the River Dragons. But tonight it's the regular season finale between Carolina and Mississippi. Thunderbirds leading the series 4-3 and 1 this year. 2-3 and 0 here in Biloxi trying to get back to 500 here down on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. But we're just getting started here on a Saturday evening in Biloxi, Carolina, and Mississippi coming up for the final time here this season. We've got a lot to get to on the program here tonight. We'll hear from the head coach, Steve Harrison, coming up next. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from last night. And if you missed the opportunity to see Justin Bione mic'd up, we'll have that in the second intermission here this evening. But a busy night around the FPHL and a busy night coming here in Biloxi. And we're just getting started here on Thunderbirds pregame. The head coach, Steve Harrison, comes up next. After this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. 
give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. We're back here on Thunderbirds pregame and getting ready for Carolina and Mississippi for the final time in the regular season. Brennan Riley being joined by the head coach, Steve Harrison. And coach, last night your team's able to come away with a 6-3 to three victory at a 1-1 uh, game until late there in the first when you get on the power play. Jan Salak makes it a 2-1 game. Rattle off four and answer goals the first 40 minutes of that game. You guys were dominant, really dominant all night as well. But uh, a good three points and a good victory against a, uh, a team that uh, is heading to the playoffs. Yeah, we, I, I I was really pleased with the way the game went. Uh, uh, we had a little bit of a uh, learning experience in the third, but uh, uh, overall, in general, uh, we played pretty strong offensively, defensively, and, and uh, uh, just the way the you know the whole game went about it. We even had to. You know, uh, Farmer stood up there and, 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 and took care of some business also. So ju just from my standpoint, it was, it was, it was a great effort uh, from top to bottom. And uh, I, I thought it was a, a really good effort. Talking with Mario Cavalieri last night, he said that he thought that the defense played terrific and that he didn't have to do too much. What was the defense doing so well? Well, you know, they're, they're, they moved the puck quick. They were talking. I, I think it was all five guys. I, uh, as I said, uh, th there was nothing last night that was really glaring uh, until we got into the third period. We had a couple of... Uh, little mistakes <laughs> that uh, let them back in the game. But uh, as I said, I, I just think all five guys worked hard and, and back checked. The forwards were back checking, and, and we, we, we forced them to stay in their zone a lot. Our defense were very aggressive and, and, and did a great job there. So I, I think it was all five guys. And then when Mario had to make a couple saves, he, he, he was there. That second line comprising of Jan Salak, Yuri Pastuka, and Roman Kramer, they all three of them found the back of the net last night, multi-point nights for all three of them as well. Uh, what did they do that allowed for them to be so successful? Well, they were moving their feet and, and uh, you know, and they see each other and, and, and they move the puck. And, and so uh, you can't skate as fast as the puck and we've always talked about that, but uh, uh, they moved the puck very quickly and, and uh, cycled the puck. And as, as I said, they look for each other. And uh, when those guys, uh, you know, get a chance to score, uh, uh, usually they find the back of the net. Having Yuri back, what does that do for this team? Well, he, he's just a great player. And, uh, you know, both ends of the rink and uh, in the dressing room, just just, just everything he does is, is uh, uh, he's an asset to us. And uh, uh, he just elevates everybody else's game. He's a, he, he sees the ice. He, he runs the power play from the top. Uh, he just does a lot of things for us, but uh, as I said, he's just a skilled hockey player and he helps us. Looking at the rest of this weekend now, you get them for the final time here tonight. Uh, a place that you guys have had troubles this season last night, though, you're able to take care of business. What do you guys have to do to be able to, to get the repeat from last night? Well, we, we've got to come out tonight and play. Like, they're, they're, they're struggling a little bit here uh, the, lately, and uh, I know their coach isn't very happy the way things are going here. So they're, they're going to try and turn the tables here tonight. And so their intensity is going to have to come out. And us, we're, we're, we're going to have to play our game the way we played last night and, and come out. Last week, we played a great game on Friday. And Saturday, we just were kind of stuck in second gear. So I, I'm, uh, I've talked to the boys, and, and uh, uh, tonight's going to have to be, we're going to have to be in fourth gear and, and get going and uh, play like we did last night. And if we do, we'll be in good shape. Well, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck to you here this evening. Thank you. That's head coach Steve Harrison. we got more to come here on Thunderbirds pregame after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston Sale. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997. 
puts the real in real dirt. And she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, and heck, even the hot dogs. A one-of-a-kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Back here in Biloxi, getting you set. Carolina, Mississippi for the final time here this season. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Last night, Carolina picking up the 6-3 victory for Carolina. It was the 10th time this season that they have put up six or more goals. Well, let's take a look at them and see how it looked and sounded here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB last night in the 6-3 victory. It was all the way back on March 2nd against the Zydeco. Face off in front, they score! Coming off of the dot, Carolina goes right into the zone in his first game back since March 16th. Yuri Pastuka picks up goal number 17 here this season with 15.30 to go here in the first period. Carolina takes a 1-0 lead here over Mississippi. Ford behind the net. He waits out to Baker. Here's Pestuka, the goal scorer so far here tonight for Carolina. Puck pinballs around. Salak over to Kramer with 14 seconds left to go. Kramer at the four half boards. Finds Ford to Salak, a one timer and he scores! With 8.6 seconds left to go here in period number one, Jan Salak gets his 22nd of the season. It comes on the power play, and Carolina takes a 2-1 to -one lead here late in the first. Schnapp closing on to Helen. Helen got rid of it, snapped it all the way over to the far half boards where Matt Stoya will flip it out to the neutral zone, and Joe Kennedy will go racing after it. Kennedy with a tape-to-tape -tape pass to Nate Keeley. Here's Keeley, he scores! A beautiful find and a nice move by Nate Keeley as he was in all alone. Thunderbirds were in 2 on 0. And for Nate Keeley, gets his ninth goal of the season, beating Joe Shepard high over the blocker side. And here, three minutes in to the second period, Carolina's doubled its lead. It's now 3 to 1. Clay Keeley kicks it along. It's taken away. Going the other way, Connor Mullins. Pass gets deflected. Now here's a stretch pass here. Schnapp all alone on a breakaway. Schnapp to the forehand. A save. It's still loose. Rebound. Attempt and he scores. The 20th of the season for Jacob Schnapp needed a second effort. Shepard thinks that there might have been interference, but it doesn't matter as the goal counts here at the 10 minute mark in period number two. Jacob Schnapp getting his 20th of the season. Gives Carolina a four to one lead. Farmer has to get rid of it quickly at Stoya closing. Got it to Vioni. Quickly up to Jan Salak at the red line. Into the attacking zone. Salak dancing through. Finds Pestuka. He scores! The second of the night for Yuri Pestuka in his 18th this season. Pete Shepard high over the blocker's side from the top of the slot. It went 9-11 to go. Here in the second period, it's 5-1 Carolina. 
boards. Kramer now trying to dance his way. He's going one on three. Helen lost it. Here's Salak all alone. Drops it off for Kramer and they score. Roman Kramer already had three assists here tonight. Gets the goal with 7.02 remaining here in the third period. Coming right out of the penalty box. He gets his 15th on the season on the find from Jan Salak. And Carolina builds the lead back to three. That's how it looked and sounded here for Carolina. Six goals on the evening last night against Mississippi. Now across the last three games, they've gone six, five, and six, trying to keep that rolling here this evening. We take a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Back here in Biloxi, the regular season finale between Carolina and Mississippi coming up here in just a few minutes. Taking a look at the Thunderbirds coming into tonight. 110 points on the season. They are locked into the two seed for the Commissioner Cup playoffs on the continental side of things with a record of 38-11-3. Columbus has now clinched home ice advantage throughout the whole Commissioner Cup playoffs with this Thunderbirds team. They've battled against Columbus all season long, so we'll get to that as the night continues to progress. But coming into this evening, Carolina coming in today being led by Gus Ford, 41 goals and 45 assists with good for 86 points for the Tilsonburg Ontario native. Second in points and second in goals in the FPHL trailing only Justin McDonald. Last night it was Jan Salak and Roman Kramer both getting four point nights on the evening. Salak now up to 45 points here this season. Well, Kramer is up to 39 for Kramer. That was his 10th multi-point outing last night. And for Salak, his 13th of the season. Yuri Pestuka re returned in a big way, picking up two goals last night. He's now up to 14 multi-point games here this season and has goals in four out of his last six after he missed the better part of two and a half weeks for returning last night. Now up to 48 points here this season. Last night, Mario Cavalieri got the start in net for the Thunderbirds. And tonight, they go with Cody Karpinski, 11-5-1 on the season with a two-point 6.5 goals against average and a 9.06 save percentage. He's won his last four decisions, including shutouts across his last two starts against Blue Ridge back on the 29th. He saved all 15 shots he saw that night, while against Baton Rouge back a week earlier, he saved 24 out of 24. This season, he is 3-3 three and three against the Mississippi Seawolves. That's a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds here this evening. We take a look at the home side, the 
Mississippi Seawolves after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, heck, even the hot dogs. A one-of-a-kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. See, closing in on Puck Trap, Carolina in uh, Mississippi. Taking a look at the Mississippi Sea Wolves, 21, 27, and 3 here this year with 61 points. They are being led by Hugo Coach. 25 goals and 38 assists for him this season. Good for 63 points. He had a five-game point streak snapped last night. Carolina Carolina last night and really all season. They've done a nice job there against Hugo Coach as well as Joaquim Nielsen. Nielsen pointless last night. He has zero points across his last three games, but he has 50 points here on the season for the Mississippi Seawolves here tonight. They'll go with Joe Shepard in net once again. Last night he was hooked after two periods after he allowed five goals on 31 shots. He's won 5-0 and in his last six games with a record of 9-15-0, a 4-59 goals against average and an 83 save percentage. We take a look at the starters after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. The Flow Garage app helps you keep up with your vehicles from anywhere. Flow customers can request service appointments, receive text and video updates, view sales and service history, receive recall notifications, and even get purchase offers via Flow Offer to Purchase. Download the app today. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world class courses no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility, we're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. 
Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. With trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. Brent to rally with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Time to take a look at the starters here this evening for the Thunderbirds. It'll be the same five that started last night. Joe Kennedy, Gus Ford, John Batista, Tucker Firth, as well as Dawson Baker. On the other side for the Mississippi Seawolves will be Dmitry Kuznetsov, Dalton Anderson, and Justin Portillo. And two goals last night, Connor Lind, as well as Connor Mullins are the defensemen with Joe Shepard in net here tonight for the Mississippi Seawolves. Puck drop and the national anthem is coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready. Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Wind Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care, we're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry, where tech. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. It's a Saturday night in Biloxi, Mississippi, and the Thunderbirds are going for a sweep of the Mississippi Seawolves here this evening for the eighth and final time here this year. Carolina and Mississippi getting ready to battle here on a Saturday evening at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOV. It should be a fun one here this evening. Last night, Carolina coming away with a 6-3 victory here over the Mississippi Seawolves. Jan Salak as well as Roman Kramer both with four point nights as Carolina locked down its 38th victory here this season 110 points in second place in the Continental Division there locked into that two seed will be playing Port Huron in two weekends time in the first round of the Commissioner Cup playoffs on the other side of this Mississippi Seawolves team they come in struggling they've lost their last four and six out of their last seven and three and seven across the last ten games where they're only averaging 2.7 goals per game and allowing nearly over two goals two more goals than that mark over that stretch. Mississippi with 61 points. They are the last seed in the Continental Division. They will play Columbus in the first round of the Commissioner Cup playoffs. It's time for our national anthem here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. We turn over our public address announcer. Our national anthem sponsored by America's Thrift Store. Performing our national anthem tonight is the All Superior North Pole Market Middle School Band.
Our national anthem here in Biloxi, Carolina and Mississippi for the final time here this season. Carolina going with the same starters from last night. Joe Kennedy and Tucker Firth on defense. Gus Ford, John Batita, and Dawson Baker are the forwards with Cody Karpinski making here his 18th start this season at 265 goals against average and a 906 save percentage. He's won his last four decisions coming into tonight, coming off of a shutout against Blue Ridge back on March 29th. On the other side for the Mississippi Seawolves, Dmitry Kuznetsov, Dalton Anderson, as well as Justin Portillo are the starting forwards. Connor Lind and Connor Mullins are the defensemen with Joe Shepard in net. 26 and a 31 saves last night for Joe Shepard. He was hooked after 40 minutes as Carolina went on to pick up the 6-3 victory and now trying to take the sweep in the season series here tonight. Carolina 9-0-1 in its last 10 games. The Thunderbirds have been on a roll. They've won 9 out of 10 and have not lost in regulation since all the way back on March 2nd against the Baton Rouge Zydeco down in Baton Rouge. It is Autism Awareness Night here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. The Seawolves and especially jerseys here this evening. Carolina in their road traditional whites as will be Gus Ford in for the draw here this evening to get things started against Dalton Anderson. Carolina and Mississippi for the final time here in the regular season as we welcome you into the first bank first period. They tie up on the draw and we're underway here in Biloxi. Carolina controls on the opening draw with Tucker Firth in his own defensive zone. Throws a pass off a Dawson Baker stick and backtracking and playing it is Connor Mullins. He goes near side to Connor Lynn. His pass takes a deflection off of John Batita. Bouncing puck at center ice as Baker corral it and snaps it back near side to Batita. Trying to float it over far side. A good poke by Dmitry Kuznetsov. Gus Ford chasing after it behind the net. Remember, no Josh Keplinger here this evening. Did not play last night. Did not make the trip here to Biloxi. Gus Ford at center ice. Makes a man miss. Trying to go to the outside. He got a body. Still got the puck away. And threw it into the slot. But then over the last second was Anderson. A clearing attempt held in by Firth. Heat lines and fires. And a block by Lynn. And the puck ricochets all the way back out to the neutral zone where Joe Kennedy will go to pick it up here as we're 50 seconds in to period number one here in Biloxi. Scoreless between Carolina and Mississippi. Joe Kennedy will hold behind his net as both sides they get off for changes. We see Roman Kramer, Jan Salak, and Yuri Pestuka out for the first time here this evening. The three of them combining for 10 points last night with Salak and Kramer both getting four. Here's Salak into the attacking zone and an offside is called for our first stoppage here this evening with 18.50 to go in the first period. Pestuka last night, he got two goals. He got the opener and then got Carolina's fifth. Now to 18. First time he played since March 16th as he missed the better part of two weeks. Face off just outside the attacking zone. Well, Mississippi controls. It's a pass that's banked off of the boards. Bioni racing down and trying to get to it. Lucas Helen beats him. There's thrown out in front and not able to corral it with Philip Wong as he sends one over to the corner. He finishes off a check on James Farmer, but the Thunderbirds are going the other way. Here's Roman Kramer to the forehand. He holds, drops it off for Pistuka. Dances to the outside. A quick shot. That one sails high. Rattles off of the boards and off a stanchion as Kramer picks it up in the corner. Touch pass behind the net. Pistuka tried to send it back to him, but it got shoveled along by Dominic Matonic. Salak, top of the zone, finds Farmer a shot. That one went off of the skates of Matonic and Kramer. Kramer gets to it, trying to fend off Matonic on the back end. Comes out on the near side, spins away from him, goes back below the goal line. Here's Roman Kramer. He waits, looking for an option. He'll bring it out on the near side. It's Kramer. Trying to backhand it along to Bistuco. He's going the other way. Now here comes Lucas Helen, one on four, as Mississippi's getting a change. Drop pass, Stoya pokes it along into this slot, racing over as Hugo Coach, he picks it up, banks a pass to the outside, a quick shot, and it's into the waiting trapper of Cody Karpinski, who makes his first save here this evening with 17.48 to go in the first. Karpinski coming into this evening 3-3 three and three this season against Mississippi. On the other side, Joe Shepard is 1-2 and two against the Thunderbirts. Nate Keel will be tossed out of the face-off dial, bringing Chris Ciola, opposed Dalton Anderson. Face-off comes right out, quick shot, got blocked, bouncing puck, and Karpinski gets a quick touch on the near side, though. Hugo Coach picks it up, throws it behind the net, chasing after it. Danny Lasio battling against Clay Keeley, gets around him, trying to spin away now for Nate Keeley. 
Anderson shovels along near side. Over in the near half boards, there's Jacob Schnapp getting a touch to it against Tristan Clusa, who was just signed yesterday. Behind the net, getting rid of it was Connor Mullins. His pass went only to Gus Ford, though, who now battles at the red line. And sends it over to Tucker Firth, who has some time. Snaps it over far side. Baker waits for it and finds John Batita on the near side. Here's Batita trying to dance by a defender. He gets it back, though, threw it behind Baker. And now the pass comes all the way to Kuznetsov, who's in all alone on a breakaway. Kuznetsov in front. And a nice job on the back check by Joe Kennedy. But the hand does go up, but it's a delayed penalty. And Mississippi. We'll go to the power play here with 16.59 remaining in the first. So Mississippi will get its first crack at the power play here this evening. Last night they went one for two on the main advantage. Carolina scoring on their only power play attempt last night. 21% on the power play for the Seawolves here this year. That's fifth in the league, while Carolina has a 79% clip on the penalty kill. Good for seventh in the FPHL. Faceoff comes to the right of Cody Karpinski. 16.59 remaining here in the first period. Joe Kennedy off for two minutes. Faceoff is won by Carolina. Clearing attempts held in on the near side by Hugo Koch. Near side. They call a slash on Joe Kennedy. It's Philip Wong behind the net against Clay Keeley. Banks a pass back out to the point. Coach goes far side. A one-timer from Stoya. Saved by Karpinski. Rebound thrown right out in front. And that one goes off the skates of Philip Wong as Gus Ford tries to break the other way. He's got Pastuka with him. Ford to the outside trying to get around Stoya. Shifted along into the near corner. Koch. Throws it off the skates of Jackson Bond. Pastuka racing after it into the neutral zone here with a minute 25 remaining on the man advantage for Mississippi. Got a couple of good looks here early on against Cody Karpinski. Stoya. Near side to Jackson Bond. Bond trying to get past Bioni. Brings it out around the far side. His pass went to no one, though, as Joe Shepard will have to play this all the way back down at his goal line. Four minutes gone here in the first period in Biloxi. Carolina and Mississippi still scoreless here in the ninth and final meeting here this season. There's a stretch pass all the way up. And it'll be rattled around by Portillo. Portillo, two goals last night, one of them coming on the power play. He got both in the third for Mississippi. Anderson in the corner. Drops it off for Lasio. Backhands it along. It's Lucas Helland at the half boards. Chips it out in front. James Farmer gets to it. And he lofts it all the way down as Carolina clears here with 35 seconds to go on the slashing call against Joe Kennedy. 15 and a half to go here in the first period in Biloxi. A stretch pass. Too much on that for Helen. Karpinski thought about going to play it in the quarter and then retreats to his crease. It's backhanded behind the net. Lasio near side to Kiznetsov. Shovels it around far side. Chasing after it. Lucas Helen. He's got Clay Keeley closing. 15 to go here on the power play for Mississippi. Kuznetsov, top of the zone, a shot through traffic, got deflected, dents the end glass, and a nice backhand pass by Clay Keeley up to John Batita, shovels it along, trying to get to it. Now in front of the Seawolves bench. Batita now in the zone, trying to dance by a defender, and said it ricochets back out to Lasio Kennedy out of the box, and we're back to five on five action here as Carolina is able to kill off the first power play opportunity tonight. Here's Wong, a shot and a save by Karpinski. In the neutral zone. It's dumped out Firth, applies a huge hit there right in front of the Thunderbirds bench. The hand goes up, and it looks like Firth is going to be going off. With 14.41 remaining. Here in period number one, Carolina looks like it's going to be going to the penalty kill for already the second time this evening. A crushing hit by Tucker Firth, sends him to the penalty box for two minutes. When we come back, scoreless here, 14-41 remaining in the first period. Here from Biloxi, back with more after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Scoreless here, 14-41 remaining in period number one, but the Thunderbirds are already going to the penalty kill for the second time this evening. Joe Kennedy, who has 
Joe Kennedy was calling for his slash just a few minutes ago. Carolina killed off that penalty, but right after that, Tucker Firth applied a big hit, and he's called for a roughing minor. And so at the 5-9-C mark, Carolina going to the penalty kill for the second time here this evening. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. So Carolina goes to the penalty kill. Being outshot 4-1 to one here early on in our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. It'll be Wong and Ford for the draw and coming to the right of Cody Karpinski. Faceoff is won by Wong and to Matt Stoya. Jackson Bond has it. Top of the zone, trades place for Stoya. Shot through traffic, went down in front. A quick rebound from Portillo goes wide. And Pastuka, he'll clear as Carolina gets its first clearance here on its second penalty kill of the evening. Matt Stoya from behind his netminder, Joe Shepard. Into the neutral zone. Trying to slide one near side. It got past Bioni as now Bond and Farmer. They chase after it. Farmer got in touch to it. It's sent out to the point. Stoya at the blue line. Goes far side for Bond. Bond picks it up. Pesuka closing. A little touch pass off of the boards. And Stoya chips it behind the net. Thrown out in front. Took a deflection. Here's Coach to the lefty. He had a lane for a second. It said Stoya far. Got a shot. That one sails high. Coach. Drops it off for Jackson Bond. His pass got deflected. Bioni now throws it all the way out to Gus Ford, who races after it with Jackson Bond. What a nice job getting back and tipping it along, but the Thunderbirds still have it. Here's Ford, a shot, and that one saved by Shepard. Ford, a couple of good looks last night. Trying to get an early look here tonight. Portillo floats one along. 45 seconds to go here on the penalty kill for Carolina as Joe Kennedy dumps this one all the way down here with 13.20 remaining here in the first period. First period, as always, brought to you by First Bank. Stoya floats one up to Jackson Bond, who starts up the far side. It'll be dumped in and rattled around to the near half boards. Lucas Helen battling, gets it out to Dmitry Kuznetsov. Here's Lasio. A shot and a save by Karpinski, and he hang up, hangs on to it. Here with 12.56 remaining in the first period. So a faceoff comes to the left of Cody Karpinski. Faceoff is taken by Carolina. Joe Kennedy behind the net. He's got Lasio on him. Gets it past Anderson and Schnapple backhanded along all the way down on Shepard here. 12.45 remaining here in period number one. Lind up to Kuznetsov. Firth out of the box here at 12 and a half to go here in the first period. His net stop chips this one along. Joe Kennedy chasing after it into the corner. Clay Keeley smacks it along over to John Batita. Batita looking for a quick break, finds Firth, goes off the skates of Connor Lind, and Philip Wong will just bank a pass all the way back to Joe Kennedy, who floats one into the waiting right hand glove of Jan Salak. Salak looking for an option, has Batita. Brings it into the zone. He's got Seolik with him. Here's Batita spinning to the near half boards. Trying to dance past two men. Puck bounces free. And now here's a quick stretch pass out to Jackson Bond. Across center ice. Jan Salak on the back check. Got a piece of it as Bond has to recollect in the neutral zone. Kuznetsa dumps it in cross corner with Kennedy. Back in and along. Batita picks it up. Floats it out to the neutral zone. Over eight minutes gone here in the first period. Still scoreless here between Carolina and Mississippi. But Thunderbirds being outshot 5-1 in on our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal. Tranker on the near side. Nate Keeley spins away from Philip Wong. His pass got deflected by Lucas Helen. Goes off of the glasses now. Wong and Keeley battle for it in the corner. Stoya trying to come in and take it away. It's shoveled along. Backhanded out. Here's Stoya. Top of the zone. Sent far side. Walking in. A shot and a glove. Saved by Karpinski. Here with 11.23 remaining in the first period. So face off to the right of Cody Karpinski. Ford 
Tangles up, and the Thunderbirds win it here with 11.20 to go in the first period. Roman Kramer snaps one over far side. Dawson Baker trying to get it back to Ford. Instead, Kramer will pick it up in the near half boards. Roman Kramer behind the net. Pass goes off of the legs of Mullen. Second effort, got to Baker, chipped it along to Ford, who taps it into the corner. Kramer at the half boards. Shovels it along to Baker. Baker looking for Whalen, who was trying to crash the slot. Instead, it got deflected all the way back out, and Kramer picks it up and chips it along to Clay Keeley. 10.50 to go here in the first period. Carolina and Mississippi still scoreless here on a Saturday evening in Biloxi. Connor Mullins over in the far corner. Banks a pass off of the end boards. Roman Kramer has trouble corralling it as Portillo drops it off. Lucas Helen snaps it far side. Kuznetsov racing after it and Bioni takes it away. He banks a pass over to Roman Kramer. Kramer looking for options. Can't find anything. Lasio close on him right at the red line. It goes off of the skates of Ford. Lasio. Able to pick it back up and slide it to Connor Lynn. Snaps it near side, it'll be dumped in, and Karpinski will play this behind this cage. We approach the midway mark here in period number one. Carolina still only with one shot on goal so far. Connor Lynn, a quick shot, and a save by Karpinski. Rebound right out in front of him, and he finds it on the second effort and smothers it with 10.09 remaining here in the first. Karpinski being tested here early on. Carolina a little slow out of the gate. Mississippi trying to bounce back. They face Columbus tomorrow. Finish up a three and three here this weekend. Face off, a shot from the point. Dents the end boards, trying to pick it up. His coach chips it along to Philip Wong. Races after it over at the far point. Lind to Wong. It said Farmer takes it away. Farmer now up the far side. He's got Schnapp on the near side. Farmer finds Schnapp a one-timer. Oh, what a save by Shepard. Seolik. To Schnapp in the corner. Throws one out in front, getting a piece of it. A rebound here. Seolik his rebound attempt goes off of the post. Chris Seolik inches away from getting his first goal as a Thunderbird, but instead here comes Hugo Koch, gets around Farmer, a shot and a save by Karpinski here at 9.26 remaining in period number one. Carolina with two good looks there on Joe Shepard, but he's able to make a couple of saves and keep this a scoreless game. The goalie's playing well so far here in Biloxi. We got more to come here. 9.26 to go in the first. No score between Carolina and Mississippi. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Nine twenty-six to go here in period number one. Carolina and Mississippi are scoreless here over the midway mark in the first period. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Carolina right now in a battle with Binghamton at the moment. If it should get to that, and that's the Commissioner Cup final matchup, well, whoever has the most points would be the home seed and would get three games at home in the Commissioner Cup final with the. Columbus has clinched home ice advantage for the whole playoffs, meaning that they would be able to get a majority of the home games, or a majority of the games in the three-game set in the, in the continental side. They would have two at home, and then they have three at home in the finals. Face-off coming to the left of Cody Karpinski. The Thunderbirds win it and clear the zone. Joe Kennedy racing after it over on the far side. He dumps it into the corner. Racing after, Connor Mullins chips it along. Jan Salak sends it right back around. Dominic Matonic shovels it over to the far corner. Jackson Bond and Joe Kennedy collide as Bond comes away with it and brings it behind his netminder. Nine minutes to go here in the first period. A stretch pass out in front of Stoya. And a stoppage as it was going to be an offside. So he'll bring the face off all the way down in the attacking zone for Carolina. Here with 8.58 to go in period number one. Yeah. 
So Jan Solak for the draw to the right of Joe Shepard. Dalton Anderson will be tossed out. Face off. Poked around. Kennedy trying to keep it in at the blue line. They say that he did not, so the Thunderbirds have to get back on the side. Up the near side. Jackson Bond chipping it along. Jan Salak on the bank. Check battle against Dominic Matonic, but it's still smacked into the defensive zone for Carolina. Tucker Firth picking it up on the near half board. Shovels it along the Kramer. Finds Salak before it's knocked down by Connor Mullins. Mullins now has it in his own slot surveying. He was trying to find Jackson Bond. Roman Kramer got a touch as now Kennedy and Portillo. They chase after it. And Tucker Firth comes away with it. Slides it up to Kramer. Right back to Firth here with 8.20 to go in the first period. Salak. To Pastuka, Pastuka dangling a shot. That one's blocked by Kluset. Portillo the other way. Well, it's thrown in, and Karpinski guides it into the corner. Philip Wong trying to get a quick rebound. Went off of Clay Keeley as it's rattled over to the near side. Wong and Salak. Pass got deflected. Portillo touched it along. And it's banking it along to the near half boards. Jan Salak shoveling it into the corner. Closing is Lucas Helland. And now he retreats on Clay Keeley. And Jan Salak takes it. 7.40 to go here in the first period. Shots are 9 to 4 in our Comtec LLC. Shots on goal tracker. Here's Batita on the attacking zone. Trying to get past two men. He does to the outside. Throws one in on Shepard. But right into the waiting glove. And he freezes here with 7.34 remaining here in the first period. Thunderbirds this season, 15, 9, and 2 on the road away from Winston-Salem. Averaging 3.3 goals per game below their season mark of 4.1. Face off taken by the Thunderbirds. Baker, a back in, got deflected. Is now Bioni and Koch. They chase after it. Farmer trying to come over. He holds up Koch at the moment at the near half boards. At the point, Connor Lind, a quick shot, and a save by Karpinski. He saw that the whole way, and he freezes with 7.17 to go here in the first. Farmer and Coach, they were tangled up over at the half boards well after the puck had trickled away. Carolina's already killed off two penalties here tonight. Forward for the draw. Stepping in to take it, kick it along as Batita at the point. Connor Lind, he... Can't hold it at the blue line as now Mississippi has to get back on. Over in front of the benches. It's taken by the Seawolves and dumped in by Matonic to the near corner. Bioni has some trouble with it. Trying to clear it. Instead, Lynn takes it, threw one in, trying to get a deflection from Koch. He couldn't get there. Here's Anderson, a quick shot and a right pan save with Karpinski. Farmer trying to spin to the corner. Lasio comes in and picks it up. Throws a pass to no one but Gus Ford, who now gets pinned to the boards by Dalton Anderson behind the net. Out in front, a quick shot and a save with the glove by Karpinski. Rebound attempt goes off of the legs of Farmer, and Batita scoops up the rebound. Batita throws it near side. Here's Dawson Baker. Trying to pull it back on the forehand. Got it to Ford. Ford looking for options. He'll backhand it along and cycle it in. It got held up in the official skates out at the point. Whalen walking in and a save by Shepard. There was 6.19 remaining in the first. Shepard last night, he got hooked after 40 minutes. Saved 26 out of 31 shots. They brought in Austin Mellon who made his first career FBHL appearance save seven out of eight face off goes into the far corner Matt Stoya backhands it along a lofted pass trying to run it down Jackson Bonnie finds it a shot and a save by Karpinski who shovels it away over to the far dot Nate and Clay Keeley they battle for it it's taken it goes off the side of the net might have hit someone in front Jackson Bond backhands it down to Philip Wong, trying to spin away from Gordon Whalen. He lost the puck as Nate Keeley, he takes it up the near side. Keeley a goal last night. He had a multi-point night with a goal and assist. He gets taken down to the ground. No hand up from either of the referees. Stoya walking in and he scores. Tenth goal this season for Matt Stoya beats Cody Karpinski. 
High over the glove side and with 541 remaining here in the first period, Carolina trails one to nothing. With how this game has started, yeah, the thing that Mississippi would get the first one and they do there. And now the Thunderbirds will play from behind for the first time here this weekend. We're back underway, 5.40 to go here in the first period from Biloxi. Seawolves with a one to nothing lead off of Matt Stoya's 10th goal of the season. He's now got seven points in his last 12 games where the defenseman last night was playing more as a forward. Joe Kennedy across the red line, thanks a pass, and he'll chase after him. Took a hit from Lynn. Salak trying to pick it up behind the net over in the far corner. Him and Matonic battle for it. Salak sends him to the ground, still has it. Out to the point, Firth, his shot got knocked down by Kuznetsov before Portillo. will throw on right back to Firth. Carolina trying to go the other way quickly. Mississippi changing at the moment. And instead, Portillo lofted all the way back out to the neutral zone. Joe Kennedy racing back. Hugo Coach pressuring him. Kennedy trying to spin away from Philip Wong. He finds Erie Pastuka. Pastuka, he loses it at the blue line, and now Mississippi a chance the other way once again. A nice poke check by Tucker Firth, but Coach picks it back up. Hugo Coach trying to send it back out to the point. Lend a quick shot. It got deflected and went over the net. Picking it up on the near sides. Let's see. Oh, throwing through the crease. No one was home, though, as Connor Mullins and Pistuka battled for it. Pistuka played the body and worked down. And a beautiful bank pass from Bioni up to Kramer. Here's Kramer up the far side. Gets shoved off into the corner. Him and Connor Lynn battle. Thrown back out. Top of the slot. Here's a shot, and they score. Gus Ford with 4.18 left to go here in the first period on the find from Roman Kramer. Had all the time in the world in the top of the slot and is able to send one over the glove of Joe Shepard with 4.18 to go here in the first period. We're tied up at one. Ford hadn't had a goal in his last two games. And now he gets his 42nd here this season. So the Riddle tractor goal coming from Gus Ford. An assist from Roman Kramer, who gets his fifth point this weekend with 4.18 remaining here in the first period. We're back underway in Biloxi, a brand new game here as we get into the later stages of period number one. Behind the net, Lucas Helen up to Matt Stoya. He waits, trying to find a stretch pass, a little too much on it. It takes a deflection all the way down onto Cody Karpinski. Karpinski plays it near side to John Batita, chips a pass along. Helen steps up, gloves it down. Now waits a quick shot and a save by Karpinski after he got deflected. And now will bring us to a media timeout. 3.51 remains here in the first period in Mississippi. Carolina and the Seawolves both knotted up at one. We're back with more after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. We're tied up at one with 3.51 remaining in the first period here in Biloxi. It was Matt Stoya. With an assist from Philip Wong coming at the 14-19 mark. That made it a 1-0 game. Carolina responds a minute and a half later with Gus Ford getting his 42nd goal of the season with an assist from Roman Kramer. That has us tied up at one here in the later stages of period number one. For Ford now, he's got a point in 17 straight games. And for Roman Kramer now, he continues to impress. Now a point in 12 out of 15. Shots are 15 to 7 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. It'll be a faceoff coming to the left of Cody Karpinski. It's the final regular season matchup between these two sides. 
Faceoff, Ford wins it and sends it behind the net to James Farmer. He's got Dalton Anderson closing on him, and he'll spin away from him and bring it out on the far side. Quick pass up to John Batsita from Dawson Baker before he loses it at the blue line. Baker picks it back up and spins in front of his own bench before lofting a pass that Batsita will race after. He'll be the first one to it in the corner, battling against Dominic Matonic. Here's Ford. Bioni pinching down at the near half boards. They battle for it at the kick plate. A good shove there from Bioni. Batita goes down to the ground. The hand goes up. And Carolina will get its first chance at a power play. Here are 315 remaining in the first. So Carolina goes to its first power play of the evening. Last night they went one for one, now up to 23%, which is good for fourth in the FBHL. 3.15 remains here in the first period. Carolina got a late power play goal last night from Jan Salak. They set things up. Dawson Baker walking in a save by Shepard. He lost his stick. Picks it back up, though, as the puck trickles over into the near half boards. Ford digging for it. Backhands it. Salak, he collects behind the net. Salak, near side over to Ford. Baker down to the goal line. Ford looking for an option. Said sends it back out. Baker with some space back to Ford. Ford. Talent in the box. Cross ice. Baker over to Kramer. Out to the point. Pastuka, quick one timer. Went off with Salak in the top of the slot. Baker circling. Top of the dots. Down to four, near side, four down front. He tried to pull it on the near side, but Shepard made the save, and it goes out of play here with 2.33 remaining here in period number one and a minute 18 remaining on the power play for Carolina, which is brought to you by Little Italy. Lucas Helen in the box for two minutes for tripping. Last night it was Jan Salak with just eight seconds remaining in the first period on the power play that made it a two to one game. Carolina for looking more of that same success here late in a period. Faceoff, though, is won by Mississippi. It'll be snapped down 200 feet. Pastuka glides over, and he'll pick it up on the forehand. Still the first unit out in the power play for this Thunderbirds team. Baker goes far side. Ford lets it bank off of the boards. Now racing after it. Got a touch to it as now it's loose in the slot. But it'll be cleared by Stoya. Here's we approach two minutes to go here in the first period. 50 seconds remain on the power play for Carolina. Dawson Baker. Jan Salak into the attacking zone. Salak pulls up on the forehand. Back hands it over to Baker. Baker into the top of the slot. Fires it over to Pestuka. Goes near side. Threw it behind Salak, who keeps it in at the blue line. Salak down to the near corner. It's Gus Ford. He waits, trying to find someone, looking for a lane. Dancing to the top of the zone. He finds Pestuka. His one-touch pass goes off of the skate to Lasio. And it'll be cleared here with 24 seconds remaining here on the power play for Carolina. They start to get the second unit out there as Gus Ford holds. He's got Lasio near him. Goes far side to Pestuka. Duca drops it to Salak. Beautiful touch passes. Now Salak works to the outside. Salak against Connor Mullen. Spins away from him. Lasio coming in trying to take it away. As now it gets jammed up. Baker gets a poke. He has it in the far corner. Baker with five to go here on the power play. Threw it off the legs of a man in front. Gets it right back. He waits. Helen getting ready to come into the box. Baker spinning. A shot. Took a deflection. Schnapp trying to pick it up in the corner. Back to five on five here with a minute five remaining here in the first period. Schnapp took a big hit. Carolina's still threatening, though. Salak trying to shovel it along. Helen picks it up, and he clears the zone as now Clay Keeley goes back to collect. Cody Karpinski telling him he's got time. Threw it over to Schnapp. Schnapp not able to control it as the pass from Connor Lynn goes off of him. Jackson Bond with 45 seconds to go here in the first. Bond up the far side. Ah, beautiful job by Clay Keeley closing down the angle. It's thrown back out in front, though, by Wong. Banks off of the boards. And Chris Seolik will dump this one, and he takes the shove from Klusa. Womantonic picking it up behind the net. Chips a pass along. Nate Keeley, he has it. Keeley circling, waiting. A centering pass and a save by Shepard with the right pen. As now quickly the other way. Bond up the far side against Kennedy. Kennedy goes down to the ground. He got tangled up. His stick did with Bond. A hand goes up. It will be a call against Joe Kennedy. As Stoya in the corner with 12 seconds to go here in the first. Stoya out in front on the back end. He scores.
Matt Stoya gets his second of the night, and it comes with 8.6 seconds left to go here in the first period. Carolina, after having a lot of zone time, it caught slow coming back. And Stoya outlast Karpinski, getting all the way to the back end and lifting it over the netminder. And with 8.6 left to go here in the first, the Seawolves have regained the lead. It's 2-1. Back underway. And it's Helland with four seconds. One last chance, his shot gets deflected. It flutters out of play. And that will do it for period number one. Last night it was Jan Salak scoring with 8.6 remaining in the first. Tonight it's Matt Stoya scoring with 8.6 to go in the first. And it gives Mississippi a two to one lead after 20 minutes of action here on a Saturday evening in Biloxi. Carolina with some work to do across the final 40 minutes here this evening as the Thunderbirds, they trail after 20 minutes down here in Biloxi, two to one. Stoya with two, Gus Ford with one, and that's the scoring so far, as we will get set to start breaking this one down and breaking down the first 20 minutes of action here tonight. Coming up on the first intermission report. We're through 20 in Biloxi. Carolina trails the Seawolves two to one. First intermission report's coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool in Cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton. Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, and heck, even the hot dogs. A one of a kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Back here in Biloxi, we've reached the first intermission here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. And it's the Mississippi Seawolves with a two to one lead over the Carolina Thunderbirds after 20 minutes of action here this evening. Brendan Riley with you here on the first intermission report. Here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Carolina in that first period got off to a slow start. Only had one shot across the first six or seven minutes on the evening. And uh, it didn't hurt them at first, but when you got to the second half of the first period, that's when Mississippi sort of put some pressure on it and started with Matt Stoya. At the 14-19 mark, was able to beat Cody Karpinski high over the glove of the netminder. Karpinski assist from Philip Wong and Jackson Bond. Come at the 14-19 mark to give Mississippi a one to nothing lead for Stoya, his 10th of the season with Wong getting assist. Number, 20, number 30 here this year. 
as well as Jackson Bond, he gets his 26 assists. So Carolina trailed one to nothing, but they were able to respond quickly in that first period. Just about a minute and a half later, it was Gus Ford on a find from Roman Kramer as Carolina was able to get in the attacking zone. Ford was coming off of the bench as he was able, left untouched really, into the top of the slot. Kramer, he had some time, set up a pass and found Gus Ford, who was able to slot his 42nd goal of the season. Now 87 points for Gus Ford here this year. Roman Kramer gets his fifth point of the weekend and his 25th assist in total as he gets to 40 points here in his first season in the FPHL. And that came at the 15-42 mark there in the first period and tied the game up at one. So Carolina and Mississippi, they're tied at one, getting into the late stages there in that first period. Carolina would then get a power play. They would not be able to score after Lucas Helen was called for a tripping call. And then with eight seconds remaining, well, backtrack just a little bit before that, about 20 seconds remaining there in the first period. It was a stretch pass that left Jackson Bond and Joe Kennedy one on one over on the far side. Kennedy got a stick tangled up in the legs of Bond. It was a delayed tripping call coming up, but it didn't matter as Lucas Helen was able to deliver a pass out in front to Matt Stoya, who went to the backhand one on one against Karpinski and just waited for the netminder to go down and lifted it over him with eight seconds remaining there in the first period, and that gives Mississippi a two to one lead lead after 20 minutes of action here this evening. Helen and Jackson Bond getting the assists on the goal for Matt Stoyo who now has 11 goals here this season. For Bond, he picks up he picks up his 20 now, 27th assist here this season, as well as Lucas Helen. He gets his 15th assist on the campaign. So Carolina trails 2-1 to one after 20 minutes of action here tonight. Three penalties in that first period. Joe Kennedy was calling for a slashing call three minutes and a second into this one. Tucker Firth was then called for a roughing call on a hit right in front of the benches. Carolina killed both of those off. Lucas Helen had the tripping call. Mississippi killed that one off as both sides are over on the power play here this evening. Taking a look at the netminders here tonight. It's Joe Shepard and Cody Karpinski. Carolina outshot 16-10 in that first period. Karpinski saving 14 out of 16. On the other side, Joe Shepard has saved 9 out of 10. So right now, Carolina trails the Mississippi Seawolves 2-1 after 20 minutes of action here in Biloxi. As now they have some work to do across the final 40 minutes of the evening. What's the rest of the FBHL look like here on a Saturday evening? Only a week remains in the regular season. I'll we'll update you on scores around the rest of the league coming up on the other side of this timeout. It's 2-1 Mississippi at the first intermission. We're back to Biloxi with more after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. 
That's RiddleTractor.com, equipping those who get the job done. Back here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, Thunderbirds Trail, the Mississippi Seawolves 2-1 at the first intermission. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. That's the score here in Biloxi. Taking a look at the scores around the rest of the FPHL here this evening. We'll start with a game that is well into the first period from the Visions Veterans Memorial Arena. It's Binghamton and Danbury for the second straight night. Last night, Binghamton picking up a 2-1 victory over the hat tricks, and in the first period, they have a 2-0 lead. Donald Olivieri and Kyle Sneffen. They have the two goals coming within the first three minutes of the first period there in that one, and it's the Binghamton Black Bears with the 2-0 lead over the Danbury hat tricks here this evening. We go to Columbus. And after Columbus last night clinched home ice advantage throughout the Commissioner Cup playoffs tonight, it's Blue Ridge that have a 2 to nothing lead with 10-11 to go in the first period there. And rather 10-11 gone in the first period there. Joel Frazee at the 647 mark giving Blue Ridge 1 to nothing lead before Danny Martin found the back of the net to double the advantage at the 908 mark. So there in that one between Blue Ridge and Columbus got a 2 nothing game there in a Saturday evening at the Columbus Civic Center. Game just about to get going in the Continental Division coming up in about 10 minutes or so. It's Baton Rouge and Port Huron for the second time here this weekend. Last night, there at the Raising Canes River Center, Port Huron able to come away with a 3-1 to one victory over the Zydeco as they try to pick up another win here this evening. And then the final game in action here tonight is one that uh, caught a lot of the attention from, from last night. Uh, between Elmira and Watertown. It was last night, Elmira, a blowout victory, but that wasn't the main storyline in that game. In the start of the third period, there was uh, almost a involuntary line brawl, if you will, uh, between Watertown and Elmira. Former Thunderbird Dominic Dumas was uh, was involved in that. Hope that he's all right now that we saw that on the bus. And, and uh, we saw all that, or everyone on the, on the Thunderbirds saw that and hope that Dom is okay, but so now tonight with Elmira six points clear over Watertown. They're about six minutes into that one there, and it is a scoreless game there from the Watertown Arena between Watertown and Elmira. As we take a look at the playoff picture, the Continental Division is already settled up. It'll be Columbus and Mississippi in the first round, and then it'll be Carolina and Port Huron. Winner of both those series face each other in the Continental Finals with the winner on to the Commissioner Cup Finals here this season. Columbus has clinched home ice advantage throughout the whole playoffs right now. Carolina and Binghamton. Binghamton and Carolina both tied with a 110 points. Binghamton has won the Empire Division with Carolina set in second. The Thunderbirds playing some good hockey and now trying to find that here. State trail 2-1 to one after 20 minutes here tonight at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina's trailed here before. Nothing new to them, and now trying to be able to find something across the middle 20 minutes. We'll take a timeout and come back and reset things for the start of period number two. Coming up after this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. 
Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, and the heck, even the hot dogs. A one of a kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. I want Huey to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. It's a 2-1 to one lead for Mississippi at the first intermission here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina coming in there tonight here in Biloxi 2-3 and three here this season. Thunderbirds, though, have put up 6-5-6 six, and six across the last three meetings against the Seawolves team. Last night they led 2-1 to one after 20 minutes, and tonight find themselves railing and almost a carbon copy of the first period from last night, which saw Jan Salak score with eight seconds remaining. Give Carolina a 2-1 lead here tonight. It was Matt Stoy getting his second with 8.6 seconds remaining to give the Seawolves a 2-1 to one lead. Gus Ford, the lone goal scorer for Carolina here tonight. Roman Kramer getting the lone assist as for Gus Ford gets his 42nd goal and Roman Kramer gets his 25th assist on the other side Matt Stoya has both goals for the Mississippi Seawolves now to 11 on the season two assists for Jackson Bond one for Philip Wong and one for Lucas Helen in the first period the netminders Cody Karpinski say 14 out of 16 shots across period number one on the other side Joe Shepard save nine out of ten and that is where we sit after 20 minutes here tonight. Three penalties in that first. Joe Kennedy a slash, Tucker Firth a roughing call, Lucas Helen a trip. All three penalties were killed off. And now we await the start of period number two. Carolina and Mississippi for the final time here this year. Don't forget coming up on Tuesday live from Earl's, the newest edition of the Coach Harry Show. Starting at 7 p.m. live from Earl's. If you can't make it to Earl's, you can, of course, catch it here on Thunderbirds TV or on WTOB. And then the final three games of the regular season coming up next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday and Friday at home against Columbus at the Fairgrounds Arena. 7.35 puck drop for both of those games. And then it'll be 7.05 in Columbus on Saturday evening for the regular season finale. And then it'll be playoff time with Carolina and Port here on set for the following weekend. Game one will be in Port here on game Game two will be back at the Fairgrounds Arena and hopefully don't have to get to a game three, but that is yet to be determined. It will be Friday in Port here on Saturday and Sunday in Winston-Salem. Time still to be announced. But here in Biloxi, we got a 2-1 to game in favor of the home side in the second period. It's coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds.
Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. With trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. We're back here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum getting ready for the start of the second period here in Biloxi. Carolina trails Mississippi Seawolves 2-1 to one after 20 minutes and now trying to find an answer across the middle 20 here on a Saturday evening in Mississippi. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Rick O'Neill, the radio guy, back in our WTOB studios. Carolina getting its lone goal from Gus Ford. Matt Stoya has the two goals for Mississippi, and that is where we sit after 20 minutes of action. As we welcome you into the period of the long change. The second period is brought to you by Flow Automotive. Carolina outshot 16 to 10 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker there across the first 20 minutes of action. And now the Thunderbirds looking for a Response, the head coach Steve Harrison giving a few claps and a little encouragement to his team. There behind the bench. It will be Gus Ford in for the draw to get things going here in period number two against Dalton Anderson. We're underway here in the second period. Carolina trailing two to one here on a Saturday evening in Biloxi. It starts with Joe Kennedy snapping one off of the stick of Gus Ford, a pass from Connor Mullins, goes right to Tucker first, snaps it near side to Dawson Baker. Baker at the near dot, Waits sends one in on Shepard, who gloves it, and he freezes. Here just 20 seconds in to the second. Dawson Baker last night didn't come away with a point, point 10 out of his last 11, rather points in 15 out of 18. No points in five out of his last seven. He's got 67 points here this year. He lines up the top of the circles on the near side. He got Ford in for the draw. Face off goes to the half boards. A pass gets knocked down and ricochets back out to the neutral zone as Kennedy had to get rid of it quickly over to Firth with Jackson Bond pressuring. Firth banks a pass off of the end boards over to Joe Kennedy. His pass will clear the zone. Coming over to collect it is Philip Wong. Throws it right back into the skates of Lucas Helen and gets a return pass here just 40 seconds into the second period. Pass intercepted by Firth, but it goes right over on the far side. Mississippi wants a call. They don't get it. Here's an opportunity for the Seawolves on the backhand out in front. A shot goes wide from Jackson Bond. Kennedy. On the back end, starts up the far side. He's got Petita, Ford, and Baker with him. Goes a short way to Petita. Petita snaps it back over to Baker. Walking in a save by Shepard. Going straight down to the butterfly. Stoya, he gets to the rebound. He circles, snaps it over to the near half. Forwards to Jackson Bond here as we're 70 seconds into the second period. Pass gets deflected. James Farmer will collect. Get rid of it quickly to Roman Kramer. He's got now five points here this weekend. Stretch pass to Baker. Kramer trying to drop it off to Ford, but it ricochets over into the corner. A nice shot by Helen getting back. Near side, he gets a return pass, and I'll just backhand one out to the neutral zone. Farmer couldn't get to it with his glove, is now racing after it's Justin Bioni. Bioni in the corner. He's got Koch and Lasio pressuring him. They jam up at the corner boards. Farmer takes it away on the far side through between Salak and Kramer. They're able to keep it in at the point. And it goes off of the end glass. Justin Bioni. Out to the near point. Bouncing puck. Salak takes it away. Starts across center ice. Salak, he gets taken down hard by Tristan Clusa. And now the Seawolves trying to break. It's Kosh up the far side. Top of the slot. A shot parried away by Karpinski. And that one trickles over the glass and out of play for a stoppage here with 17.52 to go here in period number two. Carolina getting the first two shots here in this second period. Thunderbirds 15-4-1 on Saturdays here this season. That one overtime loss coming last Saturday. Shot comes in on Karpinski. He parries it away. The near point. Kiznetsov rattles it around. Clay Keeley, he'll pick it up over in the far corner, trying to bank a pass out to Schnapp. We got a touch to it. Now here comes Clay Keeley with Seolik 2-on-1. Here's Keeley. 
Trying to back in it along to seal it through it behind him, though. Is now Kiznetsov in the neutral zone. Gets to the red line, slides it over to Philip Wong. Trying to get a return pass. Kiznetsov had it, but a nice job by Sioli. Poking it away is Gordon Whalen now. He looks for an option, finds Nate Keeley at the red line. Threw it hard off of the skates of Wong, who settles it down. And will snap it back in as Karpinski got a touch to it, but it trickles over to the near corner. Portillo and Clay Keeley collide. Here's now Nate Keeley. Quick back can touch to Schnapp. Right back to Nate Keeley trying to get the shot away. Instead, it's poked into the corner. It's left for Schnapp. Schnapp waiting. Sends it back out to Clay Keeley. He winds and fires a shot through traffic. Looks like it went off of Seolik. He gets it right back, though. He waits. He'll cycle it around. It goes over to the far corner. Seolik. Shoved by Connor Mullins. He got rid of the puck, though. Ford angled off. And it's played off of the glass. And out of the zone here is 16.44 to go here in the second period. Joe Kennedy goes back to collect. Two to one in favor of Mississippi. Right now Matt Stoyle with two goals on the evening. His last one coming with eight seconds to go in the first period. The difference, Kennedy of the near side. Gets it up to Baker at the red line. Snaps one to Ford. Here's Ford near side. Centers one to Batsita. Helen got back at the last second. Batsita, his pass out to the point. Intercepted. It's played all around Firth. And now here's a chance the other way. Up the far side, a quick shot saved by Karpinski. Rebound guided behind the net. Baker, he gets it over to Kennedy. He's reapproached four minutes gone here in the second period. Gus Ford across the red line into the attacking zone. Got his 42nd. Dances past one man, trying to settle it down. Wraps over far side, threw it in. Getting back to his far post, though, with Shepard. The Seawolves will dump it in. Estoya dumps it in cross corner. Farmer. Trying to step by one man, trying to step by two. His pass knocked away by Danny Lasio. He rushes after it, floats it out to the neutral zone. And it's taken away. And now almost an interception. Baker couldn't hang on to that. As the puck continues to bounce around, Firth trying to settle it down. He got it taken away. Quick shot from Lasio. Karpinski got a piece of it as it goes hard off of the glass. Sewell's not able to keep it in. So they have to get back on the side. On the near side, it's Connor Lind to the back end. Centers one. Kramer got back, and he's able to take it away. Rattles one off of the glass. Wong got to it. A bouncing puck comes in on Karpinski, and he's able to cover here at 15 12 remaining in the second period. And it stays a 2 to 1 game. Shots are 18 to 13 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Better crowd than what we had last night here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum down here in Biloxi. Face off to the left of Karpinski, taken by Carolina. Farmer almost lost an edge. Up the far side, it's Roman Kramer into the attacking zone, trying to drop a pass off. Instead, it's knocked away. And he gets it back in the neutral zone. Throws it in some empty space. Farmer dances past Portillo. Can't get past Anderson, though, as he's held up at the red line. They continue to jam after, and it's played back to Justin Bioni with 14.50 to go here in the second period. Carolina trailing Mississippi Seawolves 2-1 here in the second period. It's intercepted by Anderson. Puck came back out to the neutral zone, and an offside is called here at 14.41 remaining in period number two. Both sides getting some good looks here early on. In the second period, neither side has been able to find the back of the net. Carolina still trails here at her first media timeout in the second period, 2-1. to one. Back with more after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Two to one, Mississippi the lead with 14-41 remaining here in the Flow Automotive second period. Shots on goal in our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal tracker 19 to 13 in favor of the Seawolves. Mississippi coming in tonight, losing four straight, lost six out of seven while going three, seven, and oh in their last ten. But here at home this year, they have been good with a 15 and 11 record. Couple of those wins coming against the Thunderbirds, Carolina. In three straight games against the Seawolves down here in Biloxi, only put up one goal in each of those three games. 
WTOB needs 10 seconds for station identification. We do that now. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Faceoff is dumped in. It takes a ricochet. Karpinski knocks it down, plays it over far side. With the Thunderbirds in their defensive zone, a quick shot from Jackson Bond goes wide. Nate Keeley flutters it over far side to John Batita. Here's Batita up the far side. He can't get past Matonic. Poked over far side. Chris Seal, it goes tumbling into the corner boards. Quick shot from Nate Keeley. Goes off a Wong in the slot. Batita trying to chip it along. Lucas Helen, he collects behind the net. You're a 14.09 to go here in the second period. Carolina trailing 2-1 to one here against the Mississippi Seawolves. Pass is snapped to Jackson Bond. He surveys, throws one over to the far side. Gordon Whalen rushing over. He clears his own. It takes a trip past Wong before it's snapped back near side. Jackson Bond, he's got Baker closing. Gets past Petita. Here's Bond up the far side, a shot and a save by Karpinski. Rebound popped out in front of him. Over in the far corner, Batita and Dalton Anderson battle for it. Clay Keeley joins the fray as they chip away. But it comes to Bond. Bond over in the far corner, throws one into the slot. Not able to settle it down, though. It was Anderson as the Thunderbirds are able to clear. Trying moments right there for the Thunderbirds, but it stays a two to one game here at 13.20 to go here in the second period. Stoya goes tape to tape to Hugo Coach, dancing to the outside before Clay Keeling, Gordon Whalen, angle off, puck still bouncing free, comes over near side. Anderson not able to settle it down before it's wrapped behind the net and Clay Keeley picks it up on the forehand. He'll just loft one out to the neutral zone and let Gus Ford race after it against Connor Mullins. Mullins snapped it over far side. Getting a touch was Connor Lynn as he got it past Roman Kramer. As now Mullins into the attacking zone. Hit shot saved by Karpinski, and it ricochets out of play. So at 12.51 to go here in the second period, there'll be another face off in the defensive zone for Carolina. It comes to the right of Cody Karpinski. It'll be Gus Ford and Philip Wong for the draw. They tangle up, quick shot from Lasio, sails high, and it goes over to the four half boards. Racing over and back in and along was Mullins. Firth trying to shovel it back out to the top of the zone. It gets all the way back out to Mullins. Ford closed on him. Ricochet is high in the air. It somehow stayed in play as now Kramer tangles up against two. Mullins, his pass, takes a deflection, it's Koch. He got it poked away by Firth. Puck comes back in the defensive zone as now Kennedy. Sends it right back to Tucker Firth. Got 12-19 to go here in the second period. Carolina looking, trying to tie this game up. On the near side. Lasio and Kennedy battle for it, it's poked away. Lasio tangles up with Ford, hand goes up and that's gonna be a penalty against Danny Lasio. So Carolina is looking for a little bit of a break and they get it there as Gus Ford, he gets tangled up and it'll be the second power play of the evening coming up for Carolina here with 12.07 remaining in the second period. They call a hooking call against Danny Lasio. And now Carolina will go to its second Little Italy power play of the evening. The power play coming in tonight, working at 23%, already 0 for 1 here this evening. 1 for 2 here this weekend. It starts with a face-off win, Yuri Pastuka to Gus Ford. Back out to Pastuka, quickly over to Baker at the far dot. Snaps it back near side, Ford walking in, a quick shot, it got blocked, trickles in front, Stop trying to get a rebound, and it trickles over far side. Baker, he gets to it. Far dot to the top of the slide. Spins and he scores! Dawson Baker gets his 31st of the season. It comes on the power play. He's now got points in six out of his last eight. And with 11.46 to go here in period number two, Carolina Mississippi are tied up at two. Great job in front. Carolina getting bodies into the slot. 
Shepard never saw that one, and Baker made him pay. And with 11.46 left to go here in the second period, it's a riddle tractor goal from Dawson Baker, his 31st of the season, and it's knotted us up at two here in Biloxi. Back underway. Quickly, Thunderbirds trying to break out and send a pass too hard for Nate Keeley to control, and it's dumped in by Mississippi. Nate Keeley starts up the far side. Plays a pass to the outside, gets past two men, picks it up on the forehand, quick shot, goes off of the mask of Shepard. And the mask comes off, and now they'll bring up a stoppage here with 11.21 remaining here in the second period. Gus Ford and Jacob Schnapp getting the assists on the goal from Dawson Baker. Schnapp gets his 13th assist here this season. He also gets his second point on the weekend with Gus Ford getting his second point and the assist now up to 46 assists this season and his 28th multi-point game here this year. Shepard will have to fix his mask. And a faceoff comes in the attacking zone for Carolina. It'll be Nate Keeley, John Batita, Jacob Schnapp, Justin Bioni, and James Farmer, the five in white sweaters. Faceoff, Keeley, he won it, but it's taken away by the Seawolves. It's dumped in on the near side by Dmitry Kuznetsov. Karpinski will rattle it around far side. Being able to keep it in at the points, Connor Mullins, quick shot. Knocked down by Schnapp, and he controls. Plays it up the far side to Justin Bioni. We have nine minutes gone here in the second period, and we're tied at two here in Biloxi. Behind the net, Matonic shoves off Keeley. Far side, Kuznetsov. He waits, floats it out to the neutral zone. Bioni racing over, backhands it along to Batito. He'll dump this one back in. Thunderbirds getting off for a change as Ford and Baker come out. 10.40 to go here in the second period. Shots are 21 to 14 in favor of the Seawolves on our Comtech LLC shots on Gold Tracker. Philip Wong across the Seawolves logo. Snaps a pass far side, a bouncing puck. Comes all the way back out to the neutral zone. It's Wong. Wraps it over far side. There's Jackson Bond trying to center it back to Wong. Threw it behind him though, just past his skate. Baker plays it far side. Firth will run it down. He gets to the red line in front of the benches. He'll dump it in cross corner with Ford chasing after. Cluset. Gets rid of it to the near half boards. There's Bond, far side. Lind almost forgot it. Instead, we'll drop it back to Jackson Bond here as we approach the midway mark here in period number two. And a Saturday evening in Biloxi, the ninth and final meeting in the regular season between these two sides. Philip Wong chips it over near side, but an offside is called here at 9.54 remaining here in the second period, and it brings us to immediate timeout. But Dawson Baker on the power play with assists from Gus Ford and Jacob Schnapp have tied this game up at two. We got a good one here in Biloxi so far. So we're over the midway mark here on a Saturday evening at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. More to come from Biloxi after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Nine fifty-four to go here in the second period in Biloxi. Carolina and Mississippi are tied up at two. Matt Stoya has the two goals for the Seawolves on the other side. Gus Ford and Dawson Baker, the two leading goal scorers for this Thunderbirds team, have this game tied up at two here in this one. Carolina trying to come from behind here this evening against the Seawolves team. It's the ninth meeting between the two sides. Carolina 4-3-1 this year here against Mississippi. 2-3-0 though here in Biloxi. Anytime you get Dawson Baker and Gus Ford on the score sheet though, you think you have a pretty good chance at coming away with the victory. And the Thunderbirds now trying to rattle off a few after Baker's goal came at the 8-14 mark. Doing a presentation during the 
media timeout as now we're ready to get back to play. Faceoff comes outside the Thunderbirds defensive zone across from the Seawolves bench. Shots are 21 to 14 and our Comtech LLC shots on gold tracker as they wait for the doors to close. And they do. It'll be Gus Ford, Dawson Baker and Roman Kramer with James Farmer and Justin Vioni. Faceoff taken by Carolina and James Farmer. He looks for a breakout pass, got deflected, but now Ford trying to run it down. Connor Lynn racing over, trying to bank a pass back out to the neutral zone. He does, after it took a ricochet, picking it up on the far side. Jackson Bond, a quick shot, saved by Karpinski, and Farmer clears the rebound to the corner. Stepping in, though, is Philip Wong. He battles against Gus Ford. Kramer slides it back out to the neutral zone, but Lynn collects. Lynn sends it over to far side, a quick pass. Goes wanting. Did they get a touch to it? No, they did not. And it'll be an icing against Mississippi. So they'll bring up a face off in the attacking zone for Carolina. And Steve Harrison will bring out the line of Chris Ciolik, Nate Keeley, John Batito with Clay Keeley and Gordon Whalen. 9.24 to go here in the second period. Keeley for the draw. Ciolik and Lind encroaching a little bit from the near side. And they will toss out Philip Wong. And now they'll bring him back in. Face off is won by Carolina, but splits the defenseman. And racing back to pick it up is Gordon Whalen. Banks the pass far side. John Batita got a touch to it as it trickles down beyond, beyond the goal line. Behind the net, Nate Keeley battling for it. Left it for Chris Siolik. Siolik out to the point. Gordon Whalen, a shot through traffic, goes wide off of the end boards on the near side. Helen tries to clear and gets out of the zone. Siolik was trying to stand up a man in Connor Lind. Now in the ref's crease in front of the penalty boxes. Guys battle for it, trying to jam it free, and eventually does to Clay Keeley. Slides it up to John Batita in the neutral zone. Comes Batita all the way in the attacking zone, trying to drag his way past the man. Blibber to shoulder for its poke back out. And now Mississippi tries to break the other way and go three on two if they hurry. Up the far side, here's an opportunity. Dancing it out in front and a save by Karpinski as Jackson Bond was coming right in on the doorstep. He tried to go forehand to backhand like Matt Stoya did back in the first period, but Karpinski able to stand tall in his crease and keep us tied up at two here with 8.33 remaining in the second. Jackson Bond with a lot of speed on display there. Karpinski, though, a nice job keeping us tied up at two. Faceoff now comes to his right. It's won by Carolina and Joe Kennedy. Back hands it over far side to Jacob Schnapp, who's now on the line with Yuri Pestuka and Jan Salak. Pestuka chasing after. Over on the near side, a pass goes wanting as Kennedy collects in his own blue line. Snaps it over near side, Matonic having trouble with it. Finally, he's able to corral it and slides it over to Hugo Koch. Here's Koch, a shot and a save by Karpinski. Big save there by Cody Karpinski. He's had a few here tonight. Kennedy banks a pass to himself. Starts out through the neutral zone. Finds Pestuka. Trying to go with a one-touch pass to Salak. Instead, it went off of Matonic. And it'll be smacked back in by Kennedy off of the end boards. Schnapp chasing after it. Battling against Coach. Trying to step in and take it away as Mullins. Instead, Pestuka finds it back out to the point. Here's Tucker Firth with some space walking in. And he sails it high. Kennedy. Near side, brings it behind the net. He's looking for an option, can't find anyone. He's got Lasio on him. Chips it along the Dawson Baker. Seven and a half to go here in the second period. And Puck goes off of a skate of a man in the new, in the slot. And it ricochets over far side. Baker and Matonic battle for it. Nice job by Baker playing the body. Fires it back out to the point, but Farmer just getting off the bench, couldn't keep it in. He waits for Baker to get back on side. He has it on the back end. He couldn't find Ford, who is behind the D. Chip back out to the neutral zone. Kuznetsov, he's trying to settle it down. Instead, Bioni gets rid of it quickly. Here come the Thunderbirds the other way once again. Seven minutes to go. Baker winds and fires, and a shot goes wide on the near side. Portillo, he whacks at it. Held in at the point for a second by Bioni, trying to chip it back in, but it went off of Farmer and comes back out to the neutral zone. Farmer over to Baker. Tried to find Ford. He does on the second attempt. Ford in the corner. 
battling for it. And it's slid along over to the far corner. Portillo and Kramer now. They collide. Puck bounces free for Philip Wong. Wong closed down quickly by Baker as the Thunderbirds regain control. Six and a half to go here in the second period and a 2-2 game. Kramer, he's on sign, left it behind him. Baker finds it and a block in front by Helen. Kramer waiting for it to settle down. He has it at the far dot, brings it into the corner, threw it off the skate to a man and takes a hit. Quick bank in. Helen. So Portillo dumps this one in as Mississippi gets off for a change here as we have six minutes to go here in the second period, which is brought to you by Flow Automotive. Matt Stoya, two goals. Gus Ford and Dawson Baker, a pair of goals here tonight. Thunderbirds lose it. Mississippi trying to break the other way now. Coming up the near side. It's Stoya. He puts the brakes on. Finds a man in the slot. A shot from Anderson. And a save by Karpinski, who covers here with 545 remaining here in the second. Oh, good look there for Dalton Anderson, who can find the back of the net. 12 goals this season. But he threw it right into the midsection of Karpinski, who was able to square it up. As these two sides, they go back and forth here on a Saturday evening in Biloxi. Face off to Karpinski's right. Nate Keeley wins it. And Joe Kennedy holds behind the cage. Shots are 24 to 14 on a Comtech LLC. Shots on goal tracker. Carolina only with four shots here in this second period. And this goes for icing. Faceoff now comes to the right of Cody Karpinski. Once again, Carolina trying to clear the zone here. Faceoff is taken by the Thunderbirds and Clay Keeley. He holds behind his netminder. Thunder five and a half to go here in the second period in Biloxi. Joe Kennedy starts up the far side, snaps a pass up to Nate Keeley. He chips this one in into the corner. John Batita closing a pass. It's ricocheted along. Kennedy keeps it in at the point and will cycle it around. Batsita knocks it down, finds Nate Keeley to the back end, behind the net. He's got Matonic on him, trying to step through him. Instead, it goes over the far half boards. Clay Keeley pinching down, finds his twin brother, Nate. Nate battling for it against Matonic. Under five to go here in the second period. Batsita with Lindahl over him. Throws it out in front. Seolik finds it. His shot goes wide on the near side. Kennedy racing after it. Able to send it along. Kennedy picks it up. Out front on the back end. He scores. The eighth of the season for Joe Kennedy. That time pinching down from his deep position. Picking it up on the back end. And lifting it right past Joe Shepard to give Carolina its first lead of the evening. Eighth of the season for Joe Kennedy with 4.38 to go in the second. And Carolina leads 3-2. to two. He had a goal last Saturday that he did all himself. That time Kennedy doing it once again all by himself. It's a riddle tractor goal for Joe Kennedy to give Carolina its first lead of the evening as the Thunderbirds lead 3-2. to two. Back underway. Puck on the near side. Wong into the attacking zone. He loses it. Farmer took it away. Plays a pass to the outside. Too far out in front of Pestuca, though, as Helen races back to touch it up. And it brings up an icing. You're at 417 remaining here in the second period. Joe Kennedy getting goal at number eight here this season has given Carolina a 3-2 lead here at 4.17 to go in period number two. Carolina in front here late in the second. Back with more after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com.
back here in Biloxi. Joe Kennedy has just given the Thunderbirds a 3-2 lead on an unassisted goal at the 15-22 mark for his eighth of the season. Kennedy now with points in each of his last three games. After an assist last night, he also had a goal last Saturday up in Withville. So Carolina has its first lead of the evening. Cody Karpinski has saved 22 out of 24 shots on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. On the other side, Joe Shepard has saved 12 out of 15 here this evening after he saved 26 out of 31 last night. Mario Cavalieri picked up the win for his 19th of the season last night in the 6-3 victory. Face off. It's taken by Carolina after a quick touch, and James Farmer brings it behind his netminder, Cody Karpinski. Turnover, though. Here's a shot from Lasio, saved by Karpinski. Farmer throws it off of the glass, rattled back out to the neutral zone. Jan Salak racing over to the far side. Salak against Helen, trying to backhand it along. It's loose. Kramer takes it. A quick shot, and a blocker save by Shepard. Kramer digs it out. He has it on the backhand, throwing into the crease. It was parried away by Shepard as Pastuka sends it out to the point. Bioni throws it behind the net, picking it up. Salak near side. Salak battling for it. Trying to go to the forehand, gets past Wong right on front. Salak trying to center one to Kramer. Second attempt, and he scores. Second of the weekend for Roman Kramer in his 16th here this season. It's three unanswered for Carolina with his coming at the with 326 left to go here in the second. And it's 4-2 Thunderbirds. Kramer finding the bag of the net, but give a lot of the credit to Jan Salak. Battling gets Philip Wong one-on-one. -on -one, was able to hold him off. Spin out in front of the net. And fired over to Kramer, who on the second attempt, able to find the bank of the net. And Carolina leads 4-2. to two. Here late, and Jackson Bond is going to go off for two minutes as well. So Salak, he gets an assist. That's his 24th of the season, as well as Kramer getting number 16. And Carolina looks like it's going to be going to the power play, coming off of a goal. The goal comes at the 16-34 mark. It's a riddle track through goal, and Carolina goes to a Little Italy power play over the next two minutes. Face-off, though, is won by Mississippi, and it'll be dumped in on Karpensky, who drops it off for Dawson Baker. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct against Jackson Bond that has Carolina on the power play for the third time here this evening. They are over, rather one for two here tonight. Pastuka. In the far corner, trying to leave it for Kramer. Anderson trying to come in and take it away. Kramer will shovel it along. Got a man down. Pastuka chips it over to Gus Ford. Backhands it near side. Jacob Schnapp is joining this first unit on the power play. He left it. Kramer behind the net. Surveying, looking for an option. He'll go out to Gus Ford. Ford over to Pastuka. And a one-timer goes off of Lind in front. It'll be cleared all the way down to Cody Karpinski here at 2.40 to go here in the second period. 4-2, Carolina in front with a minute 10 remaining on the sportsman like conduct from Jackson Bond. Ford dancing his way in, trying to get past him in. He gets tangled up. The hand goes up, and Carolina is going to have five on three for the next 62 seconds. So the Thunderbirds with a chance to try to potentially put their statement on this game here before the second intermission. 
It's Connor Mullins going off for a tripping call. Carolina now five on three for the next minute and two seconds. They win the draw. Yuri Pestuka over to Dawson Baker with 2.20 to go here in the second. Pestuka walking in, drops it for Kramer. Looking to Pestuka, top of the slot. Baker a one-timer, and that one sails high. Kramer gets to the rebound, finds Pestuka. Holding at the top of the zone. Baker, top of the dots now. Back over to Pestuka. Thought about the shot and said slides it to Baker. Far side, Gus Ford. Pastuka walking in, has a lane, and the shot took a deflection from Wong. Ford will race after it over to the four point. Minute 54 to go here in the second period. Here's Baker trying to find Pastuka, got deflected. Ford settled it down, 20 seconds left to go. Here five on three, Ford over to Pastuka. Kicked it to himself, it's Baker back to Pastuka. Top of the slot, shot got blocked, trying to get the rebound. He whacked at it, we got knocked away in the near half boards. Stoya couldn't clear it, 10 seconds to go, a five on three. Ford, top of the zone. He waits, a shot, and that one goes off the side of the net. Water bottle goes flying, Kramer finds it. He holds out of the box, comes Jackson Bond, five on four now, Ford, far not. He waits, his shot sails high, goes off of a stanchion, and comes all the way back out on the near side, as now racing after it is Jackson Bond. Bond dancing, and a shot, he snapped it high over the blocker. 44 seconds remain on the power play for Carolina here in this one. Salak spinning to the far corner. Out to the point. Baker, he waits for a minute to go here in the second. 29 to go here on the power play. Firth, far side, Ford. Looking for an option. Throws a pass off of the stick of Lasio. Bounces down though to Batita. Out to Baker, near side's Firth. Walking in, a wrist shot is saved by Shepard and it goes out of play here with 42.6 seconds left to go. Fourteen seconds remain on the tripping call against Connor Mullins, Mississippi, trying to get a big momentum swing before the end of the second period. If they are able to hold off Carolina, who had a five-on-three opportunity, and they win the draw and clear it all the way down to Cody Karpinski here with ten seconds remaining on the power play for Carolina, and we approach thirty seconds to go here in the second period. Carolina four-to-two lead. Chris Seal. Out of the box is Mullins, dumps it in cross corner. Firth pinching down, pins a man to the boards, but Tito trying to step in as well as Matonic. 15 seconds to go here in the second. Puck still jammed, but Tito finds it. Before two blue sweaters close on him once again. 10 seconds to go here in the second period. Schnott battling for it at the point. Pokes it along to Batita. Snaps one near side. Ciola will race after it with three seconds and two behind the net. Ciola can't get rid of it. And that does it here for period number two. But Carolina, who trailed two to one after 20 minutes, put up three unanswered here in the second period and take a four to two lead into period number three here in Biloxi. Carolina in the second. Dawson Baker, Joe Kennedy, and Roman Kramer, the goal scorers, have the Thunderbirds in front four to two after 40 minutes here this evening. So Carolina, whatever Steve Harrison said to his team in, that, in the dressing room during the first intermission has paid off as the Thunderbirds have a four to two advantage heading to the final 20 minutes here in Biloxi on a Saturday evening at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina four and Mississippi two. The second intermission report, which is brought to you by Little Italy Pizza, comes up on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top-notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. Twin Oaks Dentistry. We're taking... Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. 
Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, and heck, even the hot dogs. A one-of-a-kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB Carolina in that second period getting three unanswered goals after they trailed the Seawolves by a score of two to one after 20 minutes here this evening. And in that second period, it was both sides with good chances early on in the second before Carolina started to finally be able to break down the Seawolves and it started on the power play at the 8:14 mark in the second period. After a penalty, a hooking call from Danny Lasio. It was Dawson Baker finding the back of the net on a snapshot with assist from Gus Ford and Jacob Schnapp as he took it to the top of the slot. There was bodies in front, and Joe Shepard never saw it as Dawson Baker, he got goal number 31 here this evening. That tied us up at two. The game would stay tied for about seven minutes before Joe Kennedy did it himself again. It was Kennedy pinching down, chipped the puck into the corner. He came out on the back end in front and was able to lift it over the shoulder, the blocker side shoulder of Joe Shepard to give Carolina the three to two lead. Kennedy did almost the same, except he did it on the forehand last weekend up in Withville. This time he does it on the back end here tonight. So that gave Carolina the uh, three to two lead at the 15-22 mark. And then a minute and 12 seconds later, Carolina won another. And this time it was Jan Salak and Roman Kramer teaming up once again for a goal here this weekend. Salak doing a lot of the dirty work, fending off guys. Went out in front, saw Kramer near side with Shepard coming out at him. And he was able to slide it over to Kramer. Didn't get it on the first attempt, but got it on the second. And Kramer found the back of the net for goal now at number 16 here this season. He's got goals in four out of his last six. And uh, Jan Salak assists, who's now got points in 13 out of 16. And that gave Carolina the four to two advantage there at the 1634 mark, and the Thunderbirds were able to hold on to that lead. They did get a five on three opportunity for about 62 seconds there late in the second after the goal from Kramer, but Carolina unable to capitalize on the five on three opportunity. Right now they lead four to two here over at the Mississippi Seawolves here in the final regular season meeting between these two sides. You take a look at the netminders here this evening. First, Joe Shepard, he has saved 15 out of 19 shots here tonight. On the other side, Cody Karpinski has saved 23 out of 25, with Carolina being outshot 25 to 19 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. But Carolina rattling off three unanswered goals. They rattled off four unanswered last night, and now they are trying to be able to pick up six points on the weekend and trying to pick up win number 10 out of 11. Carolina leads the Mississippi Seals by a score of 4-2 to two after 40 minutes here this evening. We have more to come here on the Little Italy Pizza second intermission report. If you were with us last night during the first period, first intermission report, then you saw Justin Boone and his mic. That'll give you one last chance to take a look at that here coming up on the other side of this timeout as the Little Italy second intermission report continues to roll along after this. Carolina 4 and Mississippi 2. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action.
Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green, and play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday race trip. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, and heck, even the hot dogs. A one of a kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. Back here on the Little Italy second intermission report. It's Carolina with a 4-2 lead here over the Mississippi Seawolves on a Saturday evening in Biloxi, Mississippi. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. And I'll give you one last chance to take a look at Justin Vioni mic'd up. It was very entertaining and fun to throw the mic on him back on Thursday during the uh, practice before the Thunderbirds got on the road to come down to Biloxi here this weekend. And so we'll take one last look and listen at Justin Vioni mic'd up here this week here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Welcome to iCarly, back again. Humming and buzzing, whoa! Easy, pal. Easy, I'm only human. Poke check. Yep, at ya. Here if you need me. Just kidding. <laughs> I'll freaking battle you. Yeah? Freaking battle you. Battle, yeah. Nice shot, Chris. Dude in the game. Clapper. He scores. I'll bring the heat today, don't worry about it. That one's for the fans. Here we go. Need one. The mic's broke. Need one. Mic's broken. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we got him. Yep, we got him, boys. Feds will be here in five minutes. We got him. Do you need me to put that uh, ointment on your back again or no? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> giggle, giggle, yeah. Couple times, you want the puck out for it. Is that Joe Dirt? Is that Joe Dirt right there? You know what I'm mad about? You didn't give me a bite of that Subway cookie yesterday. <laughs> and I gave you some of my protein pop to her. Oh wait, what are we doing? Don't pass too hard. Got soft hands. Ah! That's an impeccable save. Who's? Yeah! Oh my. Nice pass, coach. Bad play. What the? How do you expect me to rebound that one? <laughs> that one was out of mind of its own. Yeah, right here. That's how you play. Hey! Sick, sick. 
Look at us, who would have thought, not me. Uh, 20 bucks we score here. Fire it up, buddy. Gotcha. What? In what world? You don't save that. That was literally bobbling, that's on me though. Now I owe you 20 bucks. Dang. Shoot. Brandon, I said we were gonna score. Those are IOUs, count them up, they're all there. IOUs, yeah. Put them on the tab. Always great to have Justin Bioni mic'd up in a fun, and a fun project right there. Right now, Carolina with a 4-2 lead here on a Saturday evening in Biloxi, Mississippi. Thunderbirds trying to take a sweep here this weekend here over the Mississippi Seawolves and take the season series as well. Carolina 4, Mississippi 2. We reset things for the start of period number 3 on the other side of this timeout. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Carolina, a 4-2 lead here at the second intermission here in Biloxi. Goals coming from Matt Stoya. He has both for Mississippi. They led 2-1 after the first. Gus Ford found the back of the net in the first period. And after that, Carolina rattled off three and answered in the second with Dawson Baker, Joe Kennedy, and Roman Kramer all being able to beat Joe Shepard. And so here at the second intermission, the second intermission reports brought to you by Little Italy Pizza. It's a 4-2 lead for Carolina. Cody Karpinski saved 23 out of 25 shots. On the other side, Joe Shepard saved 15 out of 19. And the Thunderbirds now trying to close down once again another three points here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina will be back in action next Thursday at home at the Fairgrounds Arena, 7.35 p.m. Puck Trump coming up from Winston-Salem with Columbus in town at 3-3, three three, the first two at home and the final one on the road with the regular season finale next Saturday at the Columbus Civic Center. Here, though, Carolina and Mississippi in their regular season finale between these two sides here this year. Carolina trying to take the weekend sweep in the season series with a victory here tonight over the Seawolves. 20 more here in Biloxi, and Carolina's trying to close it out. The final 20 minutes, the third period. Puck drop coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors 
your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Proud sponsor of the Carolina Thunderbirds, Parish Tire and Automotive. Your reliable, local, and honest choice. In Winston-Salem, Mount Airy, Dobson, Jonesville, and Clemens. Go Birds! We're back here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. We're getting set for the start of the third period here for the final time in Biloxi here in the regular season. Carolina with the 4-2 lead here with the Mississippi Seawolves on a Saturday evening at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Carolina. And it's rattled off three unanswered goals. They had four unanswered last night on the way to a 6-3 to three victory and now trying to close things out here against the Seawolves here in the regular season. Got goals from Gus Ford, Dawson Baker, Joe Kennedy, and Roman Kramer. And now the Thunderbirds will try to close this one out here this evening. We welcome you in to the start of the third period, which is brought to you by Mustard and Crunchfield. It will be Dalton Anderson and Gus Ford for the draw, and Ford wins it off of the opening. Draws are underway here in the final 20 in Biloxi. Tucker Firth banks a pass off of his end boards over to Joe Kennedy, slides it up to Dawson Baker, quickly to Gus Ford, because Netsop threw it off of a man, and Ford takes it back on the near side. Ford trying to dance to the outside, takes a shoulder from Connor Lynn, who wraps it over far point. Kennedy got there, chipped it right back along. Batita whiffed, but Ford has it. Dances away from Mullins out in front, wrapping around, and a save by Shepard. Ford gets his own rebound, though. Taps it back along. Batita in the corner. He's got Mullins pinning him to the boards. Threw it over to Baker. Baker looking. Still has it. Drops it off for Tucker Firth. Firth a shot, trying to get a deflection from Batita. Went behind the net. Batita picks it up on the back end. Carolina in the midst of a change right now. But Mississippi still unable to get out of their zone. Some trouble with Dmitry Kuznetsov handling the puck, his third attempt. He finally gets it out up to Justin Portillo before Roman Kramer pokes it away. Schnapp to Kennedy, to Kramer. Right back into the attacking zone. Roman Kramer on the near side, spinning at the point. Brings it over far side. On the back end, trying to walk down Broadway. Had his pass knocked away. Jackson Bond wraps the pass over to Justin Portillo, who chips it off of Schnapp, gets it right back, and smacks it in cross corner. But Justin Bioni cuts it off. 18.40 to go here in the third period. 4-2 Carolina the lead. Bioni will dump this one in. It trickles into the corner. Helen shovels it along to Dominic Matonic. And over at the far half boards is Jackson Vaughn. Stretch pass to Stoya. Had it hop over his stick. Pestuka racing back after it. They wave off icing. Pestuka throws it off of the end boards. It comes in on Karpinski. He held it for a second before he finds Bioni. Goes near side to Roman Kramer. Kramer will just send one off of the glass, one off of a stanchion, gets it right back though, and is into the attacking zone. Kramer for Schnapp. Schnapp back to Kramer, got poked. Shepard got a touch, Kramer has it on the back end, looking for an option, trying to find Nate Keeley. Puck rattles around. Schnapp at the near point. 
battling for it, but Stoya comes away with it. And will just flutter it on to Gordon Whalen. Here's where over two minutes gone here in the third period. 4-2, Carolina the lead. It's lofted all the way out into the attacking zone. Chasing after it is Nate Keeley, who is angled off by Lucas Helland. That's Tristan Clusa. Banks a pass off of the glass, straight to Clay Keeley. Gordon Whalen now, tape to tape. Up to Nate Keeley. He takes a big hit right in front of the Thunderbirds' door. Nate Keeley now trying to get away with it. The hand goes up. That will be a delayed penalty coming up against Mississippi. Karpinski to the bench. The Olek Center is one trying to find Nate Keeley. And he'll be touched up here with 17.26 left to go. And now he got some extracurriculars down on the near side. You got Nate Keeley. You got Gordon Whalen. You got Danny Lasio. as well as Lucas Helen. And if you're a Carolina right now, you got a two-goal game. You don't want to end, you're going on the power play. You don't want to end up taking a penalty. That would end up losing that power play opportunity. Keeley got hit hard. And it looks like... Nothing will come of that skirmish. But Carolina will go to the power play. Put two minutes up for Tristan Clusa. As Carolina goes to the power play for the fifth time this evening. So Clusa off for two minutes. Carolina now is one for four tonight on the Little Italy power play. We'll get another opportunity as they call it a boarding minor against Clusa. Face off to the left of Shepard goes into the corner. Jacob Snop comes in, takes it away. Schnapp out to the point to Pistuca. Over to Gus Ford. Ford walking in. Far dot goes on the back end. A save by Shepard. Baker gets the rebound though. Out to the top of the zone. Pistuca far side to Ford. Ford saucers one. Baker settles it down. Out to the points, Pestuka. Back to Baker again. Looking for a lane. Kramer, he has it near side. A shot that goes off the back of the apron. He races after the rebound. Trying to battle for it with Connor Lynn. Jacob Schnapp comes in, takes it away. Here's Schnapp on the near side. Out to the point. It's Baker. Settles it down, kicking it to himself. Baker centers one, trying to get a deflection from Kramer. Instead, it goes over to the far corner. Ford trying to get it back out to the point. Pestuka just a half second late, race, rushing over. Carolina has to go back into the zone. They do here with a minute 15 to go on the power play. Gus Ford on the near side. Brings it out far side. Backhands it out to Pestuka. Snaps it over to Baker. Back to Pestuka. Baker near dot. Puts the brakes on. Finds Ford far side. He couldn't handle the puck as it hopped over his stick. Pestuka. Looking for a lane. Just flutters one in. Got deflected. Snapped the rebound. Save Kramer. Gets to it though. Couple good looks there for the Thunderbirds. Schnapp brings it out in front. He couldn't wrap it around. He had Mullins closing on him. Bond racing after it. Ford found it. And here's Pistuka. Top of the slot to Baker near. Donna shot. Save. Rebound out in front. Clearing attempts kept in, though. 36 to go here on the power play. Ford to Baker. A one-timer. It got deflected by Lind. And Shepard's able to get back over on the near side and cover. Here with 15.57 remaining in the third period. 31 seconds remain on the power play for Carolina. We're here in our Mustard and Crutchfield third period. Carolina, a 4-2 lead. They've now gotten the last five calls here in this game after Joe Kennedy and Tucker Firth were called for penalties back within the first five and a half minutes of this one. Second unit out there, John Batita for the draw. Coming to the right of Shepard. They will tell Matt Stoy and Chris Seulink to back off as they are encroaching. Face off is won by the Thunderbirds. Clay Keeley sends it far side. Tucker Firth gets right back. Keeley winds and fires. That shot goes high. Rebound from Batita trickled across the goal line. Would not go though. Nate Keeley now has it in the near corner. Sends it out to Clay Keeley. 
Keeley sends one in. Petita got a deflection. Far side, he gets to it. 10 to go here on the power play. Petita snaps it over to Seoli. Settles it down. 7 to go here on the power play. He waits. Tries to send one into the middle of the zone. Instead, it gets deflected into the corner. Petita picks it up. Goes forehand. Trying to wrap it out on the near side. Came free for a second. Petita gets taken down to the ground as the puck pokes free over into the far corner. Stoya and Seoli battling. Seoli takes it away from him. Matonic and Seolik now, both former teammates in Whitfield. We approach five minutes gone here in the third period. Carolina, the 4 2 lead. We're back to five on five action. Over at the four and a half boards, Lasio and Batita. Nate Keeley coming over. It's not cleared. Firth kept it in. Firth, top of the slot, a shot. That one goes high. Batita trying to settle down the rebound. Instead, it's taken away by Matonic. Two on three the other way. Now, some reinforcements. This one snapped in as Mississippi's getting off for a change. Firth, he whacks at it, clears it out to seal like has a ricochet off his leg as Clay Keeley now. He waits, and he'll slide it over to Tucker Firth. 14.37 to go here in the third. Shots are 25 to 23 on our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal tracker. Yuri Pestuka dancing to the outside, went down to a knee for a second, then had to get rid of the puck and throws it over to empty space and Clay Keeley. Keeley to Pastuka, one touch pass to Schnapp. He'll rattle this one around. Kramer racing after it as it poked along, takes it behind the net. Here's Kramer to Schnapp in front. It goes off of the legs of Lind. Schnapp, he gets to it over in the far corner. He surveys, trying to throw it out on the far side. Instead, it has a ricochet over to the near side. Schnapp at the half boards. He's got Wong pressuring him, threw it out in front. Kramer trying to glove it down. If he did, he would have had a one-on-one -on -one with Shepard. Instead, it's rattled over to the far half boards. 13.55 to go here in the third period in Biloxi. Justin Portillo, he had two goals in the third period last night. Drops it off for Philip Wong. A back pass ends up being taken away by James Farmer, who finds Dawson Baker at center ice. Baker up the far side. Trying to center one. He's getting closed down by Klusak. Kramer, he has it. Throws it out to Farmer, but a nice job at the last second by Dmitry Kuznetsov intercepting the pass as it's floated back out in front of the benches and Gus Ford. Ford into the attacking zone. Near side puts the blinders on as he had Klusak closing on him. It's thrown off with Stoyan's glove. Ford picks it back up at the Sea Wolves logo at center ice, and we'll just dump this one back in. We approach seven minutes gone here in the third period. Stoya up the far side into the attacking zone. Stoya shot. It's blocked into the corner. Quick rebound goes off the side of the apron. Stoya still has it. Though. He's got two goals here tonight. Throws one into the crease. Karpinski guided it into the far corner as Batita holds in front of his own bench. Chips a pass. Ford had to wait to get on side as Connor Lynn goes and runs it down and it trickles all the way back out in front of the Thunderbirds bench with Joe Kennedy. 12.48 to go here in the third period. Four to two year score. Will this go for icing? It will. Here with 12.44 to go here in the third period. Carolina again a power play opportunity and some good looks here early on in this third period trying to find a goal to find some insurance here in this one but right now Carolina with a 4-2 lead with 12-44 remaining here in the third back with more from Biloxi after this this is Thunderbirds Hockey once upon a time not so far away two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day they had heard of a baker one with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Make Rita call. points here this weekend against the Mississippi Seawolves. Thunderbirds being outshot 26 to 23 in our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker for Carolina right now though coming off of a power play opportunity.
It was an icing, and so now Carolina will have the draw coming to Cody Karpinski's left. Faceoff goes into the corner. They battle for it over in the far in the near corner. Here with 12.37 to go in the third period. A quick shot from Wong, saved by Karpinski as a rebound comes out into the slot. Dawson Baker lofts it out to the neutral zone before Wong takes it away and rattles it hard off of the boards. Karpinski playing a little ping pong with it, battling it up in the air. Near side, Mullins drops it off. Let's see, oh, a quick shot. That one went off a bond in the slot. He gets to it in the corner, trying to get away from Tucker Firth. He did, but Ford closed him down. Battle for it. Out in front, Wong had it knocked away. Baker will snap one off of the boards. This one, will it have enough for icing? No, it will not, as Matonic has to touch it up right in front of the goal line. 12 minutes to go here in the third period. Clay Keeley. Chips it along over on the far side. Nate Keeley now slides it up to Chris Seolik. Seolik, cross corner. Roman Kramer, a quick shot. That one dents the corner glass. Kramer and Lynn collide. Seolik throws it into the slot. Only recipient, though, is Lasio. So he banks a pass off the end boards. Right back to Chris Seolik. He's got Dalton Anderson on him. Here with 11.37 to go in the third period. It's a 4-2 lead for Carolina here in Biloxi. Helland. Against Nate Keeley. Keeley got it, threw it right in on Shepard and into the glove. And he freezes here with 11.26 remaining in the third. With one more goal, Carolina would make it the final four games against Mississippi here in this regular season, putting up at least five goals. They've gone six, five, and six across the last three matchups. So one more, they had reached that threshold again. Carolina will hop on the bus back to Winston-Salem. Following the conclusion of this one, Faceoff goes into the corner. Helland races after it, throws it over. Chris Seolik going back to pick it up as Clay Keeley forgot it for a second. Regains it, throws it off the legs of Danny Lasio as now Keeley goes deeper into his defensive zone. Gordon Whalen on the near side trying to clear the zone. He will as Helen couldn't handle it. Helen and Nate Keeley tingle up at center ice as Hugo Coast drops it off to Danny Lasio. Lasio, he looks for an option. His shot gets deflected, goes off the back of the apron. Coach picks it up on the back end, chips it back out to the point. Here's a quick shot. Didn't get all the way through as Nate Keeley takes it away. Keeley, his pass took a deflection. Got to Kramer, though. He'll dump it in as the Thunderbirds get off for a change. They bring out Yuri Pestuka, Jacob Schnapp, as well as John Batsita. Here's Philip Wong. He goes down to the ground. He was trying to get a call, but it was a good poke check. Crowd wanted a call as well. Portillo dumps this one in. Karpinski got a touch to it over at the far half boards. Taking a quick shot saved by Karpinski, who's hugging this far post. We approach the midway mark here in period number three. Farmer far side to Schnapp. Schnapp back to Farmer. A quick back in. Saved by Shepard. Rebound bounces free. Goes off the back of the net. Batita chasing after it. But Wong goes far side to Kuznetsov in front of the benches. Quick shot from Kuznetsov gets deflected and it goes out of play here with 10 minutes exactly remaining here in the third period. And they will keep him out on the ice. They have to wait for it to get under 10 minutes so we continue. Faceoff's gonna come to the right of Cody Karpinski. In a 4-2 game here at the midway mark in the third period. Thunderbirds trying to pick up their 39th win here this season. Faceoff is taken by the Thunderbirds. Behind the net, though, it's a turnover. Here's Linda. Quick shot. It goes off a Stoya in the slot. A bouncing puck clears the zone. Backtracking the Matonic as he sends it high off of the glass. And Cody Karpinski will settle it down for his defenseman, Tucker Firth. 9.45 to go here in the third period in Biloxi. Carolina with three unanswered goals in the second period to take a 4-2 lead here into this third. Neither side's found the back of the net here across the final 20 minutes so far. Joe Kennedy makes a pass off of the glass. Snap back near side. Kennedy will go back to chase after it in his own defense zone with under nine and a half minutes to go here in the third. Tucker Firth plays a pass up the near side. Baker not on side. Doesn't realize it. And with 9.17 left to go and icing will be called and that will bring us 
for the media timeout. Carolina with the 4-2 lead here with the Mississippi Seawolves as we're into the back half of period number three. Carolina four, Mississippi two. More to come from Biloxi. After this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. a 4-2 lead with 9-17 remaining in the third period for the Thunderbirds here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. They're trying to get out of Biloxi with six points here this weekend for the end for the first time here this season. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Got Rick O'Neill, the radio guy, back in our WTOB studios. Carolina. Getting goals from Gus Ford, Dawson Baker, Joe Kennedy, and Roman Kramer. Matt Stoya has both here tonight for the Mississippi Seawolves. Mississippi, they have one more game this weekend. They host Columbus tomorrow. Columbus facing off against Blue Ridge for two, then head down here following the conclusion of their game this evening. Face off to the left of Karpinski. They tangle up on the draw. It goes into the corner and sent back out to the point. Stoya, he waits a shot. That one went off of Wong in front. A nice job by Gus Ford closing off Dominic Matonic. Gets to it, though, in the corner. He's looking for an option out to the point. Stoya, one-timer. That one dents the end boards and comes all the way back out to Baker. Baker saucers one. Matonic got a glove on. If he didn't, that probably would have been icing instead. Whoa, and they still call icing. <laughs> Lucas Helen brings it all the way down into the attacking zone for Mississippi, but the officials, they correct the call, and it brings a face-off. Back in the neutral zone is now Schnapp and Helen. They exchange some pleasantries. Crowd getting into it. Oh, face off at center ice. 8.50 left to go here in the third period. Carolina four, Mississippi two. Face off is taken by the Thunderbirds and it comes back to Clay Keeley who waits in his own defensive zone. Goes near side to Gordon Whalen. Looking for an option. Goes the short way to Chris Seolik. Backhands it along. It was held up at the blue line by Jackson Bunn, who throws it all the way down. And this is an icing with 8.34 to go here in the third. So we'll bring up an attacking zone draw for this Thunderbirds team. Tonight game 53 of 56 here this year. Face off to the left of Shepard. It comes right in on him. Kramer trying to get to it. Instead, Mullins angles him off. Mullins far side, snaps it into the skates of Philip Wong, who got his stick lifted. They battle for it in the air. Him and Clay Keeley tangle up, and Chris Seola collects the loose puck. And an offside is called. So they'll bring the draw out in front of the Thunderbirds bench. They will bring out five new guys. Be Nate Keeley, John Batita, Yuri Pastuka, Justin Bioni, and James Farmer. Not seen much of Jan Salak here in this third period. Carolina still being outshot, 27 to 23 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker, and they'll redo the draw. Face off taken by Danny Lasio. It's in the attacking zone and is stood up by James Farmer. Puck bounces free in the slot, chipped over to the far glass. Pestuka gets it out of the zone. And we have another stoppage. And with 8.09 to go in the third, the face off is going to come in 
the Thunderbirds defensive zone. It comes to the right of Cody Karpinski. 8.09 to go here in the third period. It'll be Anderson and Nate Keeley for the draw. Faceoffs won by Mississippi in the top of the zone. Clusat dumps it in behind the net. Back out to the point. Connor Lynn looking for a lane. Sends one intentionally aligned. Will a CO try to get a deflection? Hand goes up. Bioni's going to be going off. And Shepard, he goes off to the bench. Late penalty coming up against Carolina. Here is 7.50 left to go. And they finally touch it up. And Mississippi, trailing by two, is going to go to the power play for the third time here this evening. So Justin Bioni off for two minutes. The Thunderbirds penalty kill here in a big spot. Gonna have to stand tall. Mississippi 0 for 2 on the power play here tonight. 7.49 left to go. If they get one here, it completely changes the complexion of things across the final stages here in this one. Face off they win. Wong to Kosha shot, got blocked by Kennedy, trickled in on Karpinski and they whistle it dead. Mississippi upset with the call and Portillo right on the doorstep. They didn't think Karpinski had it. As the puck poked free on the near side. But Carolina gets the benefit of the call. And it'll bring up a draw coming to Karpinski's left. Ford and Wong. And for the draw, Ford wins it cleanly into the corner. Kennedy trying to clear it. It goes out of play. They say it was deflected, though, so no delay of game. And it'll stay five on four. A hooking call against Justin Bioni. Face off. It's one out to the point. Hugo Coach trying to go far side. A nice shot by Yuri Pestuka, extending the right leg and ricocheting it all the way down. A minute 35 to go here on the penalty kill for Carolina. Tucker Firth intercepts a stretch pass with a snap one to the right of Joe Shepard as the second power penalty kill unit comes out for the Thunderbirds. 4 2. Carolina here late. Through center ice, Tucker Firth back hands it back all the way down as Hugo Koch was trying to glide his way through. Matt Stoya sets up shot behind his netminder, Joe Shepard, who has saved 19 out of 23 shots here tonight. On the other side, Cody Karpinski saved 26 out of 28. Jackson Bond walking up the near side, trying to center one to Koch. Clay Keeley deflected it behind the net. Over at the far half, Forrest Farmer battling for it. Out to the point, Stoya too much on that pass down to the far corner. Instead, it comes near corner. Long. Against Clay Keeley. Keeley shoves him into Portillo as the puck is jammed up in the near corner. Six and a half to go and 40 seconds to go on the penalty kill for Carolina. That'll help kill a little bit more of it as they dump it all the way down. They get off for a change. Betsita, Nate Keeley, Clay Keeley, and now Tucker Firth, the four out there in white. Karpinski had to hop over his stick. Firth got rid of it. Stoya on the near side. Threw it off of the stick of Lucas Helen. Behind the net, thrown out in front. Petito is there. Lasio a second effort, trying to knock it free. It comes out to Stoya. Stoya gliding to the forehand at the blue line. It's Matt Stoya. He waits. He shoots in a save by Karpinski. It's that one ricochets high. Stoya gets to it, though, over in the far half board. Stoya spins. His shot gets deflected, trying to clear it. But two seconds and one on the penalty kill. They will with Tucker Firth as Carolina now. Three for three here tonight on the penalty kill. So they hold a 4-2 to two lead here at 540 remaining here in third in the third period. In the far side, Schnapp steps up, knocks it right to Batita. Batita trying to go to the back end, let the first Schnapp in the slot. Schnapp cycling, out to Kennedy, a one-timer, and a glove save by Shepard. Here with five and a half to go in the third.
Penalty kill, doing its job here tonight. A great kill by all three units. Not really any good looks there for Mississippi on that power play. And now the Thunderbirds, can they use that momentum to get an insurance goal here as we get late in Biloxi? Pass. Comes all the way back out to the neutral zone. A quick bank in up the far side, and an offside is called. Here at 5.21 remaining here in the third. Lysio thought he was one-on-one -on -one with Karpinski. Twenty-one to go here in the third. It's a 4-2 lead for Carolina. The crowd displeased with the officials here tonight. As well as Dustin Skinner who wants an explanation. Based off those one by Mississippi right outside their attacking zone. It snapped in on Tucker Firth who gloves it down. Banks a pass. It goes off of a stanchion. Comes right to Lasio. Trying to close him down was Joe Kennedy. A man went tumbling to the ground. More groans from this Mississippi Crown as it's dumped into the near corner. Tucker Firth brings it out on the near side in front of his netminder, Cody Karpinski. Chips a pass along. Ford trying to play it along. Instead, it comes right back to Firth. Firth gets to the red line and will smack one off of the boards. And behind the net is Joe Shepard with 4.50 left to go here in the third period. Carolina a 4-2 lead here with the Mississippi Seawolves in Biloxi. Quick backhand too much on that pass for Jackson Bond. He gets past Bioni though, into the corner. Centers one. No one there in a red sweater. Connor Mullins in his own blue line. Throws it off of the skates of Jackson Bond. Trying to flutter it along. Bioni got a piece of it and it eventually got to Wong before Roman Kramer stepped in and took it away. Here's Kramer up the near side. Kramer spins away. Has it on the back end. We'll cycle it down to Chris Seolik in the near corner. Battling against Tristan Klusa. Seolik and Kramer far side. Too late to get the pass there though. Pestuka steps in, takes it away. Shot from Pestuka and a blocker away by Shepard. Portillo. We'll just trickle this along as we have four minutes left to go here in Biloxi, Carolina, with the 4-2 lead here over the Mississippi Seawolves trying to take six points on the weekend down here in Mississippi. Gordon Whalen at the red line. We'll dump this one in with 3.45 to go in the third. On the near side, Portillo gets a touch, comes right back out to Whalen. Thunderbirds had to get back on side, and he'll dump this one in, cross uh, over to the far corner. Jacob Schnapp had it deflected. Here's Keely, a shot save, and a rebound from Benzita, and he scores. Benzita gets his 14th of the season, and that might just do it tonight for the Mississippi Seawolves as Carolina for the second night in a row has put up four and answered and take a 5-2 lead here over the Seawolves with 3.32 to go here in the third. Whalen dumped it in. It took a ricochet off of the Zamboni doors and ends up going Carolina's way as Nate Keeley fired it in. John Batita right there on the doorstep has Carolina ahead by three with under three and a half to go on the riddle tractor goal for John Batita who ties his season total in goals from last year at 14 and this will be an icing and it'll bring us to our final media timeout of the evening. John Batita getting his 14th of the year just 17 seconds ago. Starting to send some Seawolves fans to the exits. 3.15 left to go here in the third period. Carolina with a 5-2 lead. Trying to close it out when we come back. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Welcome to Martinsville. Martinsville isn't your average everyday racetrack. Far from it. It's truly one of a kind. The speed, the shape, the history, the hospitality, and heck, even the hot dogs. A one-of-a-kind weekend at the short track of NASCAR with trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and Cup Series on Sunday. It's one event too amazing to miss. NASCAR weekend at Martinsville Speedway. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. John Batita from Nate Keeley and Jacob Schnapp with 
at the 16-28 mark as Carolina ahead 5-2 to two, and we got 3.15 left to go here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum as Carolina trying to finish off a sweep here this weekend and take the season series here against the Mississippi Seawolves. Thunderbirds four unanswered goals last night en route to a 6-3 victory tonight. Four unanswered coming from behind after they trailed 2-1 after 20 minutes of action here this evening. 3.15 remains here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum with the Thunderbirds trying to close out win number 39 this season. Faceoff comes at center ice after they revert the icing call with Wong and Ford for the draw. Baker steps into one and he dumps this one in to the left of Joe Shepard. Shots are 29 to 25 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker in favor of the Mississippi Seawolves. Goes all the way into the corner. Picking up, quick centering pass from Coach. Knocked away by Joe Kennedy. Baker, he waits. Saucers one near side to Kramer. Knocks it out of the air. Picks it up. Dances past one man. Here's Kramer on the near side. And a save by Shepard. Rebound goes behind the net. Coming in to pick it up is Philip Wong. Floats a pass over to Danny Lasio. Trying to knock it down, though. Lasio rattles it back behind the net. It's Connor Lind here with 2.38 to go in the third period. Lind into the neutral zone across the red line. We'll throw one off of the glass as it goes behind Cody Karpinski's cage. He saved 27 out of 29 shots here this evening. Ford clears the zone. Helen in front of the benches to the forehand. Across the Seawolves logo will dump it in to the far corner. Karpinski thought about playing it. Instead, Kennedy swoops in to pick it up. He's got Hugo Koch pressure him. He just gets rid of it. Helen will go cross corner. Ford lets it go over his head and picks it up and brings it behind the net. Ford just trying to kill time as we have 120 seconds remaining here in the third period in Biloxi. On the near side, Baker angles a man off. Ford picks it up. Backhands long. Pastuka, a shot saved by Shepard. Rebound was out in the slot. Helen got to it only for a second, though, as Pastuka closed them off. Here's Ford down to Pastuka, walking out in front on the backhand. Save, rebound, pokes three far side with Dalton Anderson coming in to collect. Farmer kept it in at the point, though. He takes a hit right in front of the Seawolves bench here. It went 90 seconds to go in the third period. Nominate Matonic and Nate Keeley tangle up. Keeley will smack this one back in to the attacking zone with a minute 25 to go here in the third period. Helen saucers one. Too much on it, though, for Philip Wong as it ricochets behind Cody Karpinski's net. He pumped fake thing. He was going to rattle it around the boards and said dropped it off for James Farmer. He threw it off a stanchion. Philip Wong keeps it in, but loses the puck after Farmer able to make up for that. The near side, Seola, he takes a hit. He got back to it, though, and dumps it in in the back end with 60 seconds remaining here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina, a 5-2 lead here with the Mississippi Seawolves in the final minute of this one. Here's Seolik, and it tangled up at his skates. Batita finds it, and he scores! The second of the night for John Batita. Mississippi wanted a tripping call, but it came right to John Batita. Gets his 15th of the season. It makes it a 6-4 game, 6-2 game, here with 47.3 left to go. It's the 10th multi-point game here this season for John Batita. As he gets too late, they put the final nail in the coffin on the Mississippi Seawolves here tonight. The net is also off its moorings. Down on the near side, but Batita finding one high over the blocker of Joe Shepard. Giving up 11 goals here this weekend. The goal counts with 47.3 left to go. It's a riddle tractor goal for John Batita, his second in a row, and the fifth straight for Carolina. They're gonna get out of Biloxi with six points on the weekend. 45 seconds remain. Comes in on Karpinski as we're back underway. Lucas Helland and Nick Keeley there exchanging some words. Clay Keeley spins away from a man on the near side with 30 seconds to go here in the third period. Keeley will bank a pass. Him and Helen collide. 
Holding it is Gordon Whalen. Will Mississippi call off the docks here with 21 seconds remaining. Nate Keeley over on the far side, battling for it at the far half boards. Four guys looking for it. Whalen, he collects with nine seconds left to go, floats it out into the attacking zone. Petita running it down, spins away with four seconds and three, two seconds and one, and the Carolina Thunderbirds have come down to Biloxi, Mississippi, and have swept the Mississippi Seawolves here this weekend. Last night, a 6-3 to three victory over the Seawolves. Tonight, a 6-2 to two win in favor of Carolina as the Thunderbirds get their 39th win of the season, move up to 113 points. Mississippi drops to 21-28-3 and sits put and and 61 points here this season. Carolina sweeps the Mississippi Seawolves here this weekend and Thunderbirds postgame starts next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker. One with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Carolina victorious here tonight. They take a 6 2 victory over the Mississippi Seawolves to improve to 39, 11, and 3, 113 points now in the campaign for the Thunderbirds. Mississippi drops to 21, 28, and 3 and sit put at 61 points here this season. Carolina getting goals from Gus Ford, Dawson Baker, Joe Kennedy, Roman Kramer, and John Batita with two in the third period to come away with a 6 2 victory. Cody Karpinski ends up saving 27 out of 29 shots of the night. He improves to 12, 5, and 1 as Carolina takes this one here tonight by a final score of Six to two. We wrap up Thunderbirds post game after this. This is Thunderbirds hockey. Flow Cadillac is a proud sponsor of the Carolina Thunderbirds. Visit 1400 South Stratford Road for a free test drive, or go online to flowcadillac.com to schedule a sales or service appointment. Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Bears! Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com.
Carolina victorious here tonight over the Mississippi Seawolves by a final score of 6-2 here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina takes the season series 5-3-1 and, and finishes this year 3-3 three three down here in Biloxi. Carolina comes away with the win here tonight, and now they'll turn their attention to their final three games of the regular season, which starts next Thursday, coming up at the Fairgrounds Arena, 735 puck drop between Carolina and Columbus. It'll be 735 once again on Friday evening on the 12th at 735, and then the regular season wraps up next Saturday in Columbus at the Columbus Civic Center against the Columbus River Dragons, a 3-3 three three between the top two teams in the Continental Division to wrap up the regular season before Carolina gets set for a run in the Commissioner Cup playoffs. Carolina wins it here tonight. They put up six goals for the second straight night in a row. 6-3 last night, 6-2 here tonight. But that'll do it for us here from Biloxi, Mississippi here in the regular season. For my producer back in the WTOB studios, Rick O'Neill, the radio guy, I am Brendan Riley saying so long from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina sweeps the Seawolves this weekend. Now turn their attention to the Columbus River Dragons for the final three games of the regular season. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. We'll talk to you on Tuesday for the Coach Harry Show and then at 7.05 p.m. Eastern for pregame coverage.